and welcome back to HCS Weekly. I thought, yo, this is my life. I have to go pro with Halo. In my head, thought that that was more efficient, and I guess I was right. He was like the god. We would have to 2v1, like, just to beat this guy. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. 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 I don't Hello and welcome back to HCS Weekly, your weekly destination for all things HCS. I'm your host, Shy Way, and this week we have news and we have the interview. We don't have the trick jump, unfortunately. Unfortunately, clearly me could not make it. I'm not really sure what's got him busy, but he just couldn't come in this week. So we will be skipping the trick jump. However, we might have a nice trick jump during our interview later. I'm excited to bring on Patch, who is an incredibly talented Halo 1 player. We're going to be talking a lot about Halo 1 once again in today's interview and just taking a trip back in the past, but also the present. This game is still being played at a very high level today. So something very exciting to look forward to. Before we get there, we have our news and we also have our grassroots giveaway. Type exclamation mark grassroots in the chat. As always, you can enter yourself in that BR skin and nameplate giveaway. Remember, guys, every single week, if you don't get it this week, you can come around next week for your opportunity opportunity to grab one. Let's get right into the news with Maddie Rums from DukeCombo.com. How's it going, Maddie? Hey, dude. What's going on? Not much, man. We've got more news. We've got more updates. Some of them fortunate, some of them kind of unfortunate. I was reading through it. Yeah. I saw the one about the uh, flighting, which uh, I'm kind of upset about. But let's uh, kick it yeah, off with yeah. the playlist update first, and uh, and we'll get to it. Uh, yeah, not a big update. Uh, for Halo 4, 4v4 and free for all, they added uh, rock and rail to the action sack playlist. Rock and rail, all right. Yeah, and then they fixed a bug where uh, apparently, if you had blocked someone on Xbox Live, you were also blocking the, them from matching you and ranked matchmaking. So okay. they they fixed the bug where now you will find them in ranked matchmaking, but not social. But wouldn't if you block them from Xbox Live, wouldn't you not want to just find them at, anymore at all? Like, right, <laughs> wouldn't but that just I, be the end of it. The one example I heard that made sense was, say you were champ in you know, Halo 5, and then you blocked Snipe down, you blocked all these pros, you were avoiding them oh, to have to play ooh, them. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're right. That's so, actually, yeah. That was the good example, the best example I heard about it. Because I yeah. thought the same thing. I was like, but you blocked them for a reason, but yeah. you really, you know, you could be doing it just to avoid them. Yeah. That's that's a great point. So I guess yeah, you don't want to block all the best players in the game so that you specifically play worse players and if you right, somebody beats exactly. you, you just add them to the block list and then you just continue to play at the highest yeah. level. Either. That'd be pretty lame. Um, also, I remember, and I, I think it's still in effect. Like if you get blocked enough, or if you get enough like reports on your tag, you end up like you have like a a meter of like likability or whatever, right? It's like yeah, I remember, if you're in I the remember good zone. something about that, yeah. Yeah, and if somebody like blocks you or reports you enough, it goes red. And if it goes red, you only play with other people who are in the red. So you like never find games apparently, and like the only games that you find are just a bunch of trash talkers like, and like people putting all the inmates on an island. Yeah, yeah. Which I think there were some issues they had with that in the past, but pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Rock and rail, of course. I think that was in Halo Five pre previously as well. You just you, mm -hmm. you moon jumping around. You got a rail gun. You got rockets. It's a lot of fun. I saw Nated. Uh, he was raging a bit in it uh, recently. The rocket's kind of hard to use for some reason. It's like doesn't work anywhere near as well as the rail. Curious to see how it is in Halo Four, and if you guys yeah, and they said something like you get infinite jetpacks. Okay, like that. yeah. So okay, so uh, that that might be kind of fun to jump into once in a while. So yeah, mm. to see how that is. Um, and now we have the uh, the MCC development update, July 2019. So if you guys are excited for the Halo Reach flighting, I know everybody's so excited for it. Uh, unfortunately. Things are further delayed on consoles specifically. What do we got here, Maddie? Yeah, so they had some uh, trouble with uh, the flighting. Um, apparently, MCC already pushes the original Xbox Ones like to the limit as far as memory memory goes. Okay. Okay. So the new progression and customization system that they want to use also requires additional memory as well as the Unreal Engine Four, mm -hmm. which is required for the system, the new system. And that requires even more memory. So they're having a memory issue right now where it wouldn't be able to be played on the original Xbox One. So they said for now, flighting on console is delayed and it will just be out for PC. This is kind of the unfortunate problem with having the One, the One S, and then the One X all play the yeah. same games in the same generation. Is the original Xbox One, you're making all these games that just aren't going to run as well on it. And it's like the, the one good side of this is that, it, for those of you who don't already know, they're updating the, the menu system and the, the character creation. You've got customization mm -hmm. options that were never present in previous Halo games that are being brought into MCC, and that's being done on Unreal Engine 4. So, like, that sounds awesome. The fact that they're taking that initiative is going to give a new coat of paint 
all the Halo titles and add more incentive for people to play, especially if you're new and you're just playing it on PC. But in doing so, these are limitations for the original Xbox One. We can't, you know, it's not working on the original Xbox One right now. So hopefully they can fix that. Hopefully they can make it playable and, and run well. Uh, the more I play on the original Xbox One, the more I just notice like performance issues. Like I was playing Apex with my brother yesterday. He had a One S. I had a One X and we were watching them back to back and his frame drops on One S were kind of disgusting sometimes. Like when he's dropping in, <laughs> he's going, he's in the ship and he's dropping it. It just drops yeah. to like 30 sometimes or like, Oof. it's yeah. like, oh, that does not look good. So uh, yeah, it, it continues to be difficult for the original Xbox, but hopefully we can uh, we can see that that update in the near future. We can get some flighting on Xbox One. Uh, we still have the Fireflight, Firefight Flight. <laughs> still, yeah, they dubbed it Firefly, five times. It. The Fireflight, okay, cool, yeah. cool. Uh, they didn't say anything really other than they're still working on it and they don't have a date. Right. So that's 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 that. Okay. I mean, uh, they, but they, they did announce that the third flight will be PvP matchmaking, which, you know, is cool. But same thing, no date. Yeah. What? Yo, did I just read this right? And this is so topical. It says working on bringing Halo CE as close to the original as possible. Yeah, that's so actually... In the the post, he was taking he was posting community questions, and one of them was about bringing Halo C, you know, pretty much back to the original. Mm -hmm. And they they're working on it. They had a list of bugs from a Reddit post where there was a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, yeah, there it is up on screen. Hopefully, it's there uh, in clarity for you guys. Note that everything I'm currently seeing on screen is so blurry; yeah. it's like I've I got to get some serious glasses or something. But uh, hopefully, you guys can see that all in clarity. Uh, sorry, continue, Maddie. Yeah, so <laughs> there's just a, a list of like bugs and things that uh, they said they're gonna work on fixing. And then okay. there was also there's one or two things that they said they weren't gonna touch, which I believe was like a timer. Mm. Yeah, in-game timer missing when players are dead, mm. and the uh, Weapon cocking and footsteps, client side only. They said that isn't going to happen. But there's there's a lot more than what I'm saying in the post. There's uh -huh. also like a, they show a, a photo of what Reach looks like on a ultra widescreen monitor, mm -hmm. and uh, there's the option of uh, the player HUD either being all the way stretched or you can focus it to the center of the screen. Interesting. Yeah. So the but I was just the stuff I stated is just like. The meat and potatoes, you know. Yeah, yeah, and of course, all this info that you have is is on newcombo.com. People can look at the articles there. They can view that. They can go off to whatever other website is necessary. So feel free, guys, to check out newcombo.com for that information. But it is nice to see that this is this is much bigger than just let's bring them over to PC. This is uh, like oh, a yeah, real a lot of work. Yeah, they're really trying to you know make a love letter to the fans here. And and Halo CE is something that I've been reminded of last week, and I'm sure I'll be reminded of this week. It's just kind of been like the bastard child of the MCC like collection, right? Or I guess I said collection twice. But anyway, it's just uh, seeing that updated and brought to its original form, I think, is going to be very, very awesome for the fans and could bring new players into the game as well. Uh, in the meantime, we do have Face It, Ignite, Talent, and Schedule announced as well. Yeah, they announced it on their Twitter. Uh, there's going to be some new face, two new faces. Uh, Freya, I think I'm saying it right. Freya Spires, or I don't know, either Freya Spires or Freya Spears. I'm not sure. I will not correct picture. you. Yeah. Neither confirm nor deny. Uh, Shilly is going to be the host. Uh, uh, analyst on the desk is going to be Lethal. Okay. Commentating will be Gaskin, Sims, Onset, and T Square. Wait, so this is a new host that yes. we've never seen? Yes. Kind of jealous. All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gaskin Sims Onset and T Squared will be commentating. Wonder right. Boy will be hosting uh, interviews, Interview. and Shirzy will be the observer. Shirzy wow. also a new face. Interesting. Okay. But uh, you'll be able to find it twitch.tv slash face it TV and mixer.com slash face it. And broadcast wow. starts 11 a.m. Uh, what's CEST? I don't even remember. 11 a.m. Uh, over in Europe and 5 a.m. on the East Coast, Eastern okay. Time. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, uh, I looked it up and I forgot what it stood for. <laughs> That's okay. We got our uh, our schedule. We have our talent. So we're just getting closer to the event. When is it? It's the 17th, right? It's coming up in just like two weeks or something. Yes, 17th, 18th. Yeah, so uh, we are very close to one of the biggest events for Halo 3 for the year. We've got Halo 5 doubles. There's a, a lot of incredible stuff to look forward to there. Uh, we also have the Carolina Gaming League announces Halo Championship Season 1. Yeah, so they've held a few online tournaments in the past, but now they're actually doing like a, a season. 
Uh, yeah. It's a Halo 3 2v2 online uh, season of tournaments. There's going to be six weekly tournaments, two monthly showdowns, and one season finale. So it's going to nice. run from this weekend to October 11th, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, the weekly tournament prize pool is $100 for first place. At the monthly showdown tournaments, they're going to have a prize pool of $500. Mm -hmm. And the season finale will have a prize of $1,000. Uh, you also will get seating points for each tournament that, you know, will show, you know, put you where you're going to be seated in the next one. Right. Uh, for the monthly showdown, the seating points are doubled for the season finale. Okay. And then winners of the weekly tournaments will gain free entry into the monthly showdowns mm. or that monthly showdown. And then winners of the monthly showdown will receive free entry into the season finale. Right. If you want to join, it's $10 a team for weekly uh, tournaments, $20 a team for monthly, mm. and the season or the season pass, which includes all the week, weekly and monthlies, is $85. But you can find that and more at uh, carolinagg.com. First of all, very well-constructed uh, events they've got here. Like They've got it all planned out. They've got the, the amount of money that you're winning, the amount that it costs to enter. It is a little unfortunate that, I, I mean, I get it. Like It makes sense They if if you pay to play, then they can make some money. They can afford to have bigger prize pools. Uh, yeah. But hopefully that doesn't you know disincentivize uh, you know, other people from playing. I feel like the weeklies, and you'll get ten, $10 players. a team. Yeah, it's five ten bucks. Oh, ten, oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, $10 a team. Oh, and they're 2v2s. Yeah, so five bucks a person. Um, I feel like in the weeklies, you'll get a, a large pool of applicants, potentially, like maybe more amateur players. But I feel like the pro players are only going to dip their fingers into the pool for like the $1,000 prize pool or the five, 500 Even if they get the low seed, they might just jump in and try to like wreck shop. So you would get like an interesting, uh, you know, mix of uh, of talent attending these. So great yeah, to see that. Uh, that makes me curious. I, I didn't ask them, but I wonder if the season finale will be only consisting of teams that right? have Exclusive. points. Yeah. yeah. Right, because from what I can see here, it doesn't seem to matter too much if you didn't compete in the weeklies. You could still jump in. You just have a shitty seed, right? So, right, yeah. Um, yeah, but still, I mean, Carolina Gaming League do some good stuff. Make sure to check that out. And hopefully if they continue, they become partnered with HCS, HCS Grassroots and they can you know get themselves out there as well. So more incentive for these uh, orgs to, uh, to offer prize pools to have consistent tournaments. Uh, we have tournament results uh, as well from a couple tournaments that happened recently. What do we got? Yeah, so first we had uh, Halo Wars Tournament Central had a open 2v2. Mm. First place was uh, Yamato 2012 and INFR Dolphin. Second place was Admiration and Mike Beeston, Beast on. Third was Hero Absolution and Jeff Kills. And we also had the on Sunday the Microsoft Store free for all tournaments, and it they pitted uh, the. There's a few featured stores, but mm -hmm. they took uh, the top, I think it was six from uh, those featured stores and put them in a uh, two-game match. Okay. First place first place went to Benji from Century City. Second place was Apollo 9 from Yorkdale. And third place was Rami from La Cantera. Uh, Rami's a name that I recognize dipping his toe into the uh, Microsoft Store FFA. Good to see that coming mm -hmm. back, and hopefully we have uh, that on a relatively regular basis. I'm not sure when the next one is. Do you know? August or? 29th is uh, 2v2. Go. Right. Oh, 2v2. Okay, so yes. they're changing up the uh, the style, too, which is great. And I mean, a lot of 2v2 is coming out around that time, so a bit of a Halo 5 2v2 resurgence between, like, uh, the 17th and then all the way up until the first, uh, or I guess, second week of September. Uh, we have uh, Halo Classics, so that's going to be really cool to see, and Probably worth making some YouTube videos on when I get the chance. Um, we have the Halo Classic Atlanta City qualifier number one as well. Yep, the first of three took place on Saturday. First place was Falling Esports with Ace, Neighbor, Demon D, and Boo Boo Doo Boo. Second place was Five Bucks Nug, which was Straight Sick, Aries, Shelly, and Eco. And then in third and fourth was Tox Gaming, Lethal, Stinkbite, APG, Royal 2 and inconceivable which was falcated sabinator cloud and omega is better awesome and these guys will continue to compete in qualifiers remember if you win the qualifiers you get access to the the free trip right you get the hotel you get all the, the top, benefits the top eight teams top at the eight. end yeah at the end of all three they get a they get free hotel room for this the nice. duration of the stay uh, you know free food on thursdays media pa uh, media coverage you know. yeah Get that that VIP treatment. So uh, yeah. make sure you win those qualifiers in the top eight. You get that access. Uh, Europa Halo Double Down Number Two just happened as well. 
Yeah, uh, first place was Mocket, Looney and Warlord. Second place was Online Warriors, Precisionite, and Legend Z, or Legends. And then third was Mocket Orange, the other half, which was Squashy and Shabby, Shabby Dagger. Yep. So, I mean, if you're still a fan of Halo 5 and you're a European player, you've got some great options with Europa Halo. They have a whole roadmap that they released early in the year that shows all the events coming up. Double Down just happened. They've got another one, I'm pretty sure, coming up very soon. If yeah, you Team a... Takedown is Team next. Takedown. Okay, 44. well, there you go. 4v4 tournament coming up pretty soon. So, guys, if you're a European Halo 5 fan, this is a good place to uh, to continue to compete. And these are all online as well, so pretty easy to access. Um, upcoming tournaments now. Yeah, uh, this weekend, Friday, August 9th, is, as we mentioned, the first week of the CGL Halo Championship season. Uh, yep. Saturday, we have the Halo Classic AC qualifying number two, and Beachland begins. Awesome. So we've got more events coming up. Uh, these are going to be exciting, kind of just like a appetizer, I would say, to the, the big deal happening in just the week following. So we've got, uh, we've got Face It. We've got these Microsoft Store tournaments. We've got Halo Classic 2. So much to look forward to in the near future. And hopefully some more flighting updates. Hopefully they fix the issue with Xbox yeah, One and I can start to see, yeah, start to play some Halo Reach on my <laughs> Xbox One uh, because I'm pretty excited for that. And I think that's what everybody's waiting for. I mean, with Mixer and Ninja, I can't believe we didn't even think about talking about that. But like Mixer and Ninja, like everybody's thinking, is Ninja coming back to Halo? What does that mean for Halo? Yeah, like there's a Microsoft lot of would theories. be crazy not to not to put some sort of special branding initiative together between Ninja and Halo when that happens. Like it, yeah. it just seems well, inevitable. The, yeah, the theory the theories floating around is that he said he wants to go like back to his roots. Right. And then in his little uh, press conference video, in the background, there's a guy sitting with the Master Chief helmet on. Uh, so a lot of people are like, he's there coming, is. He's coming back. He's coming back. Yeah. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Here's the dream is that, uh, you know, he, he gets into competitive and I get to cast him. I get to have him on this show one day and we can have a, a good sit down conversation with uh, the biggest man in gaming right now, which would be freaking amazing. So. Uh, so, yeah, he's doing big things. Microsoft doing big things by partnering with him and just exciting news, I think, for Halo coming up. But uh, Maddie, that closes our news for today. So thank you so much for joining me. You got it. No problem, man. I'll see you around. All right, guys, that ends our news. Unfortunately, like I said, we don't have our trick jump for today. Clearly, we'll be back next week for that trick jump. So we're going to jump right into our interview. I'm excited to welcome Patch, the H1 Pro, to the stream. Hey, how's it going, man? How's it going, man? Uh, okay, here we yeah, go. This, we this, go. Uh, this other screen's a little blurry for me, too. So if we put up yeah. some gameplay or something, don't don't expect me to break it down. Oh, no, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Guys, I mean, so they, at some point... Well, yeah. well, earlier when we were watching the montage, I could tell what was happening, but, <laughs> you know, it may not be as nuanced as you want it to be. But thanks for having oh, me on. Yeah, no problem. Uh, great having you on it. And hopefully we can, yeah, cross that bridge when we get there. I didn't even consider that the gameplay would be blurry, too. But uh, yeah. Well, and, and, yeah. and also, my, my Skype is closed down once already. So if it closes down again, yeah. I'll be back in like 20 seconds. I don't, oh, you know, no. On this jinky, I don't even yeah. know what this is. I uh, dude. You're not right. the first one to complain about Skype. We complain about it every week, and we're still using it for some reason. Apparently, Discord doesn't like offer the same; just doesn't work in the same way that we're looking for, as far as with this whole overlay and the system that we got going here. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think we're in the process of transitioning from Skype over to something better. But for now, we've just got I don't know, just a whole boatload of issues. But uh, but that's not your problem. Uh, today you're a Halo One Pro, but when you're not busy, like on the sticks, what do you what are you typically up to these days? How you been? um just in my personal life in general um sure i mean whatever you're willing to say i'm not gonna dig too deep. yeah I, you know just, <laughs> a, just just a normal guy man i got a career i um i live with two other halo guys so we try to land you know not frequently but uh you know semi-frequently and you know, other than that just normal stuff i got a daughter so that, that takes up a you know decent amount of time and i'm still pretty a lot of my social you know my social circle is the halo community so it's all it's always something revolving around that either fortunately or unfortunately you know i don't know so. yeah. i mean when you're saying you're living with halo guys you're talking about halo one specifically this is the game oh yeah, yeah 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 there's uh, nothing else <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah that's all that's all we got going yeah yeah which is what I've, I've been learning i learned that through mick dick is like he you know he played halo one hardcore and he just he could not jump into any other halo title that's like he lives a breeze in you know yeah mick, mick dick's not a good representative of <laughs> so i don't know how much how much stock we can put into what he says he's okay oh, okay all right and well, also it's... he was super long-winded how did you put up with that man 
I, I survived. Hopefully, you're not the same, but no, I'm kidding. It, it'll be fine. Killed my battery twice as I was watching it. <laughs> I was like, we got to pull the hook on this dude, man. Oh, my God. No. I, it's always nice, uh, like, just learning about the game and what's so special about it, the scene. I mean, it's it's very unique, and it, I can draw parallels between that and, and, like I've said it so many times, and I'll continue to say, just Smash Bros. Melee is something I've been passionate about forever, and it's it, mm-hmm. there's a lot of parallels that I can... I can draw there with the grassroots community and, and what you guys are doing. So I, I kind of understand that passion and uh, it's very interesting just learning about it and experiencing it. Um, and one thing uh, Mick Dick didn't have, but you do have, though you don't use it too much, is a Twitter. And usually I, I'll go through your guys' Twitters um, and just kind of see what's up. The first thing I notice is apparently you have shingles. Either you're yeah. a joke or you're just broadcasting it to the world. Or Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't remember even when that was, but when I made my twitter finally i had shingles on my face and then i just that's the only thing i had in my life going at the time so that was my whole bio <laughs> the um, only thing. <laughs> yeah i forget it i think i think once you have shingles you have it forever but you can't get it again or something i don't think i can get it again so i know my dad doesn't have it again my dad has it but i never really fully paid attention to what it was it's like chicken pox yeah yeah, yeah. It's, so like it's like some... chicken, it's the same thing as chicken pox so i had chicken pox as a kid i have a scar like all of us yeah somewhere. Um, but then I also got shingles as an adult, so I apparently only like 80 year old people get it. And I, <laughs> I was gonna it. say it's an old man problem, but I yeah, didn't want to offend yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, next, yeah, next is a uh, scurvy, and then after that is the oh, rickets, no. I guess will be the next one. I don't know. Somebody, somebody's trying to tell you that you're still playing Halo 1 in, uh, in 2019, and yeah, <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but that's that's unfortunate, man. I, it seems like it can be treated, but it's painful when it when it's there. Yeah, it sucked, and I, I just I looked so I wasn't the face of our team anymore. That's why. Oh, speaking of, Sean was supposed to be here with us, and uh-huh. a legend, and he backed out. I don't uh-huh. I don't know why. He's he has a face for radio or something. He didn't want to be. I don't know. Face? So, yeah, I don't know. So I guess I'm representing us. <laughs> I, I wasn't back then. I was all messed up. Uh, John told me you had all the personality, though, that that uh, Legend didn't have the personality. Shots to, to John. <laughs> he said, he yeah. said Patch is a good grab because he's got the personality. So oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm sure we'll have a good time. Uh, also, looking through your Twitter, you don't tweet too much, but you, uh, you've you been doing some retweeting. Hopefully, John's got these photos. I tried to tell him the order of it and everything, but we'll see if we can put them up. Uh, the first one is you retweeted uh, these gold DBZ cards. Uh, apparently, Legend has all the cool shit. I don't um, even know why. <laughs> I shouldn't even. I didn't mean to retweet that. I you didn't like you. it. You said you said fucking nope or something. You said like you're not well, about it. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I meant to just comment and not retweet. I, can I fix oh. that? Can you unretweet something? Yeah, you if, just press the. Yeah, save. I'll unretweet it when we're done. Because <laughs> that They're guy is giving away. You don't think they look, they look cool? <laughs> I don't know nothing <laughs> about them. I don't know why his nerd ass has them. Oh uh, yeah. He said, "You get Krillin." Then in the comment, it said, "Okay, you get Krillin." Because I don't know, you know what that means. So that's the, <laughs> who's the nerd in this duo, man. Krillin's the uh, the short character with his head looks like a Dragon Ball, and he's like he's like he's less important in the. Man, in the show. I don't even know what a Dragon Ball looks like. So I figured, I figured while I was saying that, I was like, "Wait a sec, I can't even use it yeah. as a reference." Uh, the other thing that you should know about, though, is that you retweeted his original copy of Halo CE. This is the uh-huh. uh, the other photo as well this is pretty yeah. cool do you have something like this do you know how much something like this goes for i think the i think the cool thing about that was is is the not for resale one so that means it came out of the box i like came out of when you buy the console i think right. that's what that means oh so uh, i guess that's pretty cool i didn't win it you, you figure out how to inside track but yeah I yeah i i ended up doing a quick uh like just internet like search on how much it costs for like an unused copy of Halo CE. Some of them are pretty like basic, like forty bucks. But then I found this one that's eight hundred ninety nine ninety five US, and it's already been closed. Like it's been bidded on or whatever. And it says Halo Combat Evolved Microsoft Xbox two thousand one new sealed seven point five A grade black label. You ever heard of any of it, any of that? It, no, they're just adding stuff to spruce it up. <laughs> It's an A grade black label original copy in the. It's got the plastic casing around the box. So I don't know if we have a photo. I sent. Uh, I sent it to John as well, and if he maybe has a photo that we could. Yeah, touch. no, but, you could send some of those to Ninja and get him to autograph them. Then it's. Oh yeah, and then it'll be like yeah, a couple thousand more yeah. maybe. Who knows? Uh, but that's really expensive for original copy. It's cool going back and seeing some of that stuff. Like the original. You remember the N sixty four boxes, Nintendo sixty four like cardboard. Yeah, I do. I do. Those were freaking yeah. so sick. Like, yeah. as un- un- unfortunately, all this stuff is, you know, 
my history. I remember all of it. You know, I'm yeah. getting to the point where the game I play is a damn relic. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got to fix this, man. Yeah, yeah. But there was something just so beautiful about the, and just not to just totally segue, but the presentation of those boxes, like they were, they were so nice. And then they had all the detail on the back and then you open it up and there was like a book, like a guidebook that was thick and it just had yeah. like beautiful pictures on like how to play the game. And I would, I would collect the books and be going like vacations and I would read those instead of like real books. Oh, Cause I was, dude, like, <laughs> when I was younger, when I was younger, we would try to convince our parents to buy us like the gamer magazines that had the codes in them. Nintendo but Power and like all that parents, stuff. Their parents wouldn't buy them, so we, me and my brother, would go to the grocery store and we rip the pages out with the codes. Oh, so God. I mean, that's all you wanted anyway. Right. But, right. Uh, you know, I remember doing that, and like you remember uh, CDs would have the lyrics in the book. Like, yes. I guess it's called the book of the of the of the CD. I guess. Yeah, so like it's soundtrack. Kind of the same thing. Yeah, and now the games are just on the on the console. I guess. Yeah. All now the- you just it's all digital. You just download it. You get nothing else with it, right? Yeah. They send um, you a shitty game that they update later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it starts shitty and then they yeah, continue to add yeah, to it. Exactly, that's that's, exactly the, that's the key for. these days. You add yeah. some loot boxes so that you could you price skim the top of the market and they just buy them all and then you yeah. update the game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Nintendo Power was what I had as a kid, and I got this one edition in 2001 for Smash Bros. Melee, and it had a the, the soundtrack, the CD for Smash Bros. Melee. And I put mm-hmm. that shit in my Walkman, and I would listen to that in school like every day. I was the biggest Dude, nerd. You were a nerd. <laughs> I'm still a nerd, but I, thankfully, I, I, you know, I make it look less so. Yeah, but, you uh, grew into it. Try to guess. avoid the stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, the last thing that I had on your Twitter, not to, we're going all off on your Twitter here. You had this really old tweet from back in January. I totally missed this, um, but it was an old post with Tifu, who said, uh, "Elon Musk fix my internet." I don't know if you have that, John. You could throw that up um there it is and we can't read it but i'll just do the paraphrasing he basically says uh fix my internet and then elon musk replies he says if he fixes it then uh i'll buy a or if you reply i'll buy a tesla and then elon musk replies and says like sure or something and then he goes with a follow-up post and buys the tesla and he's like oh this is amazing thank you and elon's like glad you like it uh and you had a great point we talked about that beforehand just how crazy is it that elon musk is like talking to a Fortnite kid yeah, I mean, it shows the the power of gaming, I guess. Like, Elon Musk is, like, the most, you know, the only guy transforming our world right now, and he's connecting with a, a gamer yeah. kid. So, yeah. I mean, but Tifu's obviously super, super popular, so. Yeah, yeah, the damn Fortnite kids with all the money. But uh, hopefully if we get Ninja back, then Halo kind of gets that pedigree or something at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I guess in the meantime, let's talk about some Halo CE. Let's take a trip down uh, memory lane here, because uh, today you've been playing Halo for a long time, of course, back in the beginning. Um, but it looks like you started with Halo CE and you might end with Halo CE as well, because today you are one of the four horsemen. So you, along with Legend, Ogre 2, and Her- Harris, you are four unanimously considered to be the best players in the game. Apparently yeah. Mick, Dick, Mick Dick is like a close fifth, and then you've got a couple other notables, but they're called like the nippers. They're like nipping at the uh, the prestige of the top four. <laughs> but uh, but where did that all begin? So how did you first get into Halo? Well, let's just upgrade the Talk horsemen about the nippers, thing. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the horsemen thing, two of those horsemen are... Don't even play. You know, they're scared of competition or something. They have all the, oh. all the excuses in the world is why they won't play. Harris, you know, I don't I don't know. What, what What's your gamer tag? Shy guy? Is that your gamer tag? Is that what you go shy by? Way. Shy oh, way. yeah. Shy guy. That's Harris. Like when a girl comes around, oh. just shy guy. He's a weirdo. And he just doesn't play anymore. We beat him. He never came back. And then Ogre 2 would rather, I don't know what the hell he does, stream... Uh, stupid games instead of come play uh, <laughs> yeah it's like living it up in the reciprocity house coaching some teams is yeah it's fun. weird it's like people people are so invested in this game they talk about the game they're like they're probably in the twitch stream right now and they're in the twitch stream for any halo tournament and they're always sure. talking about it but then when it comes to proving it or staying competitive or giving back or all these other things they, they just do something else i'm like so all week you're not doing anything you're playing games and stuff why don't you come play when we're really playing a game? So I, I don't I don't agree with that horseman thing anymore. I think there's two players that are better than everyone else. Uh-huh. And there's a bunch of a bunch of other players who aren't willing to prove it. A couple so. shots fired here. Uh yeah, Ogre yeah. two, I, I don't know if you hear this, but uh apparently he was challenging you to a duel here. We got a two v two coming up. I mean Halo Classic two is coming up. I thought we were gonna talk about this at the end of the interview. We're talking about it now. I I, I think you, you wanted to challenge the guy coming up on, on the next event. 
Yeah. I, <laughs> or am I, wanna... I putting you on the spot here? <laughs> no. I, not only do I, I would love to challenge him, but yeah. I'm I'm there. You know, I'm I'm ready. So I, yeah. it's hard to challenge anybody who doesn't show up. So I mean, <laughs> and Ogre Two is obviously an amazing player, um, and I like him personally. He's a decent enough guy. It's just. You know, the, people like to talk about the hierarchy and the skill level and where people are. It's just, you know, we can't talk about the past forever. I, I, I still have played this game forever. I still show up to all the big lands. I have a teammate, you know, so we're ready to go. So I, the horse, the horseman thing doesn't exist anymore. We're oh. And we played them in a series, me and Sean versus Harris and Tom, uh-huh. and we beat them. So only one series. Right. Uh, so I so don't know. It's history there. And, yeah, uh, but nice but anyway, so it's not to go off on a tangent. So uh, yeah, there's the horsemen, then there's the nippers. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it just it probably took if if your original question was how we got to this point, like how is that sure. what you're saying? Like, um, well, it was it where did you begin? But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take it wherever you want to take it. Yeah. So yeah. like you know, I probably started like the same as everybody else, just the whole <laughs> best in your household, then best in your neighborhood, then best in your town, right. best in your city, best in your state, like that. So, but I got into it pretty late. I'd say I got into, you know, it's so long ago. When I, sometimes I see other people talk about this and they name years. I'm like, how do you remember, <laughs> you know, what year? But it I think, that long. <laughs> yeah, I think MLG Philly was 05. So that means I got into competitive in 04. And, okay. uh, you know, but like I said, I started the normal way, just playing and then blah, blah, blah. And then started to play online, went to... My first big tournament, which is MLG Philly 05, um, was the Halo 1, Halo 2 combo tournament. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember. I've uh, seen old videos, but I was definitely not not around for it. Yeah, so I played with a guy that I kind of grew up with, one of my good friends growing up, and we went there. We somehow got top 16, and uh, we had to play Ogre 1 and Walshy on main stage. One game, so top 16, one game, their host. And then so going into it, shit. yeah, going into it, me and Ricky, uh, quick was his name. Okay. So we're we're good at we're good at the five popular map, which is what everyone played. And then we're like, all right, what are those? By the way, this is I, I should know this, but yeah, can list them. Oh, uh, so the main ones: Chili, Hangem, Priz, Dammy, Gary. There we go. Um, okay. And then then Battle Creek, Rat Race, Longest were kind of. For for different reasons, not fun, so people didn't play them. Interesting. So, okay. going into that game, we're like, all right, if we play Hang On, which was our best map, and which we thought we were better than other communities who played it, like other groups of players, we're like, all right, Hang On, we can win. And then okay. the other maps were like, all right, we'll make it competitive. And then it's Battle Creek, a map we've never played. Oh, and, no. Yeah, and so their host. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, their host. We, we never play it. It was kind of like, uh, my moment to like do something. I was like, man, if I knock off Ogre One and Walshy, like this is gonna be nuts. And yeah. we got, I mean, I don't know how much I can cuss, but we got stomp. Like right. we got beat fifty to nine. It was really bad oh, on main stage, God. and it was two. It was two to two, and we lost the camo and the game. Just so. barreled out of control. Yeah. Oh yeah, was, I mean, <laughs> not not that we would have had a chance because we didn't know how to play the map, but still. So that was kind of my introduction. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rough. I just kept I just kept grinding. It was probably like, I mean, I don't know for people listening or or yourself, but like when you find a game that you just love, like I just loved it, and I was gonna do whatever it took to become the best or or the best I could be, and I just kept grinding, kept playing, was traveling to any land I could. Nice. You know, if they said if they said there was better player, you know, if I heard there was better players two hours away, I was driving to go there, um, and. Uh, just got better and better, and just would go to local tournaments, and went some national tournaments. Won those. Um, yeah. Something that I did, I probably did different than most people, is I had a, a one teammate that I played with, okay. so I always played with the same guy. And then You're still playing with him now, or no? Nah, he stopped, and then okay. now I play with Legend. So um, his name was Quake. He was really good. Uh, nice. So we won a couple tournaments, a couple big tournaments, and then just you know just kept playing for the love of the game, which is like a cliche thing, but that's all you could play for, really. That's what it still is today, right? I, I imagine yeah, you're yeah, so yeah. passionate about it. Um, there was something that you said in the uh, the Gmail I got here that uh, you discovered something called VGA, it's a semi-close oh, yeah. land center. Yeah, v- so, yeah, that, yeah. To expand <clears throat> upon it, so 
uh, once I was like trying to get good, it was like I said, it was uh, a, where people would land. It was a land center that mm-hmm. was about an hour and a half from my house. Okay. And I went there the first time. I got destroyed. It was by, uh, for, you know, Halo historians that probably know these people like Vash, Mac, um, Quake, Defy, Burns. Some Gandhi. Gandhi in there. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so it was, uh, I went there, got destroyed, went back the next weekend, did a little bit better. Went back the next weekend, did really good. Went back for the fourth weekend in a row. I didn't lose a game. Or nice. maybe didn't maybe didn't lose a series. I forget yeah. what it was. But yeah. uh you know, it was just you know, I just, I was just grinding. I I guess I've been like that with a lot of games. Like if I find something I love, I stick to it, I play the crap out of it. I don't really I'm not a gamer per se. I don't play a bunch of different games, I don't jump around. Right. I just find one thing that I invest myself into and then I find myself in these weird predicament situations. <laughs> we, uh-huh. That's something I noticed about uh, people who are like, like, for example, like, let's say just not to bring it back, but the Smash community as well. Like if you play Melee, you're not necessarily a gamer because most people who play that, like, like they just play that. That's literally their life. And they don't even pay attention to anything else in the industry. Like, I, I don't know if you kind of have a similar story. It's like you play Halo C so much. Other games are just coming out. Other systems are coming out. You're you're not even really following it. It's just Halo C E is like your passion. Um, yeah. As opposed to like a gamer who's like reading game news and like, oh, there's a new console coming out. I can't wait to buy. Like that's a gamer. They they play everything casually or whatever. Yeah, right? I definitely don't do that. I, I'm yeah. sticking strictly to one thing, trying to master it, trying to love it. Because <laughs> you know, games can be so deep and so nuanced that it takes right. a lot. It's sure. like uh, I remember growing up playing sports mm-hmm. games, and like mm-hmm. you'd finally get good, and a new one would come out the next year. Like I don't got time to master Madden '99, and then Madden 2000 comes out. Isn't like, it like I'm, the same though? Like pretty much the same, or is it? I, is it, do they change it? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I should know. It's like yeah, Call of it's Duty. If you play Call same, of Duty it's... well, you play the next one well too. You just keep jumping yeah, up, yeah. right? I just, I just <laughs> always wanted to perfect it, I guess. So, and I just sure. love Halo One. I think it's the best. I think it's. I don't know. It's so deep. It's so rewarding. It's so difficult. It's probably the main thing when people try to describe it or whatever. It's just how difficult it is. Like you, you, you do what you think is a perfect thing and it doesn't work. And you're like, I did that exactly how I was supposed to. And it just, you know, it doesn't work for whatever reason. It's like a little bit of, you know, RNG in it, I guess. I don't know. Right. Yeah. That's what I was thinking is like, oh, is it sometimes random depending on the situation? But I, that's that's the one thing that when we were talking before the interview is just that there is an incredible amount of skill and nuance present in Halo 1, but all the Halo games have that. They just have it in very different areas. Like Halo yeah. 1, it, like the, the nades, like there are no grenades like Halo 1 nades. They're freaking insane. Like you're you're launching things at precise angles. There's so many different nades that you're throwing from different areas of the map and like they go way farther too mm-hmm. so you could do so much more with them uh the spawn system completely unique in comparison like spawning your teammate in very specific locations to give your team an advantage like some of that stuff is nuts the button combos those things kind of carry over in different capacities but uh yeah a lot of those things seem so unique and that's why i wanted to bring up the gameplay and just kind of like look at it and get your opinion on some of these little moments that i grab uh as far as the how blurry it's going to be we can give it a shot uh, i don't know if we want to <laughs> throw up one of the so the, the first one that I was thinking was uh, back in 2016 at one of the beach lands, you're playing against uh, Mick Dick and who was it? B- PB? Yeah, PB. Yep. PB. Um, and yeah, and this is this one moment. Okay, I, yeah, I can't see shit. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell what you're looking at here. Um, uh, Hyper focused. Oh, yeah, I can tell. At this point in the match, uh, you guys are completely like locked in. Like you. You're just mm-hmm. nailing them on every single yeah. spawn. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can. Yeah, I mean, it's it, you know, especially with the quad screen, it's kind of um, yeah, it's very hard. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely <laughs> destroying them now. Yeah, yeah so there's that, that that series was so that was kind of the big, I think the first big uh, beachland tournament. <clears throat> we did like a tier tournament before that or whatever. Okay. But those guys were really good, and I, I think game one was chilly, and we really just set we like set the tone big time as mm-hmm. far as uh, I think we immediately came out like we were up ten one. I was like screaming at them like I, it was just so much energy. I wish yeah. I, I we haven't we haven't been like that the past couple of beach lands. I don't know why. Kind of lost, oh, they, no. you know, when I, it's prohibitive favorites. I guess we're we're expected to win, and I haven't it's too won easy. It, so yeah, energy. but uh, <laughs> I need to get that back. I guess probably. Yeah, but I don't I know. You guys um, lost one recently, though. 
Oh, so, yeah. Hey. What happened there? <laughs> uh, we did lose. And, you know, I, I wish I could say why we did. I Neither of us had played as much as we probably should have. Uh-huh. Neither of us played very well at the tournament. Um, both of us were kind of on tilt. Like, things weren't really going our way. We are just getting angry. It just snowballs. And they 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 beat us handily. Not you wow. know they just yeah they beat us pretty good. It was <laughs> was it, was it, and then but it kind of like a little bit a little bit of a fire under us because we got to rematch them in the finals of UGC St. Louis. I don't know how many months later, four or five months later, and then right. we I mean we crushed them. We beat them even worse. So I don't know. Sometimes you need that, right? Either you either win or you learn. Is that what they say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, like, yeah, you can't win every single one, and then you know, at some point, maybe that does you. You kind of lose that fire, like you were saying. Yeah. So, kind of losing it brings it back. You're like all of a sudden more competitive. You got something to win for. Um, this is, I think, you just jumped into the other one, John. Let's uh, we can replay the uh, the original uh, chill out one and just let that play in the background. I was gonna say, do you have any kind of like a specific strategy, like when you're playing with Legend? What are you kind of looking for? What are you trying to, looking to do? Because there was uh, in that moment there, and it's gonna be hard to identify the specific stuff because it's blurry. Um, he had these uh, Legend had these beautiful prediction rockets at the very beginning, where he he fires them in. I, I don't even really know the location that, that I'm talking yeah. about. He, you can see him in the. I think he's in the top right. Yeah, um, I think he fired him. Not this camera. one. Either. I think he yeah. fired him in the camera room though. I think I remember yeah. the play. That's so, yeah. uh, It's just I think it was a situation where he got rockets and we knew that they were still battling or fighting in camera room because I was putting on pressure. I think bottom right, I'm putting pressure on them in the camera mm-hmm. room, so he's able to just shoot up a predictive rocket in there and just pick up the camo kill. I think. But yeah. um, as far as strategies with him and I, uh, I would say I'm an outlier in the community that I don't really put much stock in teamwork per se in H1. I okay. think there is an optimal I, th- I think there would be an objective optimal way to play each map that's going to mm-hmm. put you in the best the the best chance of winning and then right. so i try to play that way so if you give me a person who agrees with that optimal place play style then you know that's our teamwork right there so it's not necessarily that sean and i have played together and have really good teamwork it's that we both play the game in the way that we think is best played you right. know what i mean and then it works out well um, I would say there is a little bit of, you know, stylistically how him and I work m- map specific, not mm. throughout the whole time, because like one, you know, whenever people talk about teamwork or play styles or tendencies or whatever, they'll always be like, well, you do this on this map. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that's one map specific. But right. when you look at the whole series, you know, you can't you can't do that. Like people say that I play very slow on Damnation. And maybe mm-hmm. I do, but on Prisoner, Hang Em, Chili, Derelict, Battle Creek, Downrush, I don't play very slow at all. It's right. just I think on that map, that's the best way to do it. And I think my track record proves it so, that it, it works out really well. Um, but with him and I, uh, he, he's, I don't know, he, he just he snipes so well. So uh-huh. that, that's really the only teamwork thing that we have. Like, I think... Uh, in a very uh cocky way then i'm a very good sniper i think i'm mm-hmm. if you look at the whole community at large i wouldn't really put myself behind anybody right. but i just know how good he is from playing with him and against him that when there's only one sniper on the map so i'm giving it to sean and that's just <laughs> that's really the only thing that we do like uh-huh. um i watched our i watched the replay of our ugc finals the other night in preparation for Beachland, like just trying to get myself back into it and uh I killed McDick when he was top blue with he had rocket snipe. And then I kill him and I just run right by the snipe and pick up the rocket. And I just like <laughs> spawns and just he picks up the it. snipe. And it's like yeah. an unspoken thing. Like, you know, because if, yeah. this, if the roles are reversed, Sean's not running past the snipe and leaving it for me. He's just not right. doing it. You know? He's just, that's, he's taking it. So that would be like the only little thing that we do. And other than that, um, Something that I think that we do way better than the rest of the community is team is communication. Um, a lot of people have always been like, oh, it's split screen H1, like you don't got to talk. I'm like, you have to talk because if I'm shooting at someone, I can't screen watch. Like, it's just not how it works. Like, I'm looking at my reticle. I can't look at the other half of the screen. Mm-hmm. So him and I do a very good job of just, you know, 
giving that information while one of us is in like engaged and also when one of us is engaged letting the other one know if we're able to help like if i turn and i'm shooting a guy and sean can clean him up he says i got him and then i back off like when you look at other teams people want that kill themselves they want to be selfish they want that right. to be on their stat line when i have no no qualms about dropping you know all right whatever finish it like have it like do your thing right. um and that, that that's pretty much it and then everything else i think is about being a, a universal good teammate like if your teammates trying to accomplish something that's important like jump out and distract like give up a death you know yeah you know, be the martyr so little things like that but as far as me and him as a team i think we just both play the game the optimal way and then do it together yeah so like the the teamwork definitely takes precedence over just uh, i guess the individual needs when you're when you're playing um but yeah, really interesting dynamic there as well, and interesting how like you you know you have to have the confidence to play at the level that you're playing. When you're talking about being you know cocky with the sniper, but also just kind of giving that that role up to Legend, like understanding and respecting you know his talent with it as well. Is that kind of how you guys came together? Just uh, being like, oh, you know, this guy's clearly one of the best guys in the in the game. I got a team <laughs> with him. Is that is that what it was? It's like we got a form yeah. the God Squad, or you just happened upon each other. Well, yeah. I think we met at Maryland Madness, and we had uh, played before at Burns' house, and we, we had never met. And we play against each other, and I think we both – I had I was playing with Quake at the time, and I was like, this kid is really good. Like, uh, I heard his name. He did my teammate. <laughs> Halo too. Like, He's uh -huh. really good. And then he approached me after that little, little playing, and he said, hey, do you want a team for the tournament? I was like, well, I already got a partner or whatever. And then so I had it in my mind. I was like, all right, he's really good. And then um, – we competed against each other, I guess, at lands or whatever. Then we played against each other in the finals of a big tournament in Kansas okay. where I beat his ass. Let, it, let the record be shown that before he teamed with me, he was a loser. <laughs> um, yeah. and, then, uh, and then my teammate stopped playing, and it was like, you know, we didn't really have tournaments or anything. And then when it came back around, it was just I went back to that initial conversation, like when he asked me, and I, I knew how impressive he was. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, it just worked out. And I... And uh, I would I would hope there's that mutual respect too that he knows how good I am because when we play against each other it's such a, a damn war like really I can like I I don't know if you remember I I went to a land at his house in Florida and I was destroying the whole land like I was just beating up on Sean and then he's came to a land at my place where he just beat up on me the whole time right. and uh, no one else has done that to me and I, I would imagine no one else has done that to him so it's just you know. I don't want to compete against the guy. It's it's mentally draining. So I'll, really? I'll, I'll, I'm fine with playing, you know, uh, taking backseat to him. Everybody can say he's the greatest. It's 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 good with me, man. It's a team game. It, it does make me wonder, does that need to happen again? Do you guys need to separate from uh, two other teams so you can face off and we can see, like, the highest level duo kind of go at it head-to-head? Uh, -head? Would, that, would that be exciting for the viewers, you know? Or for you, because then you <laughs> they tried to force that socialism onto us, and then, okay. and then McDick, McDick beats us in the in the final. So, oh, okay, okay, it can happen. I mean, we can definitely lose. We can play bad, you know. But it's just we're both very good, and it's very rare that both of us play bad at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, neither of us played good enough last Beachland final, so we're not going to make that same mistake again now. And then at one point, I was thinking this might not be related to you guys. I can't remember who it was. Who's the Loch Ness monster again? Oh God! Who's that? What? I don't is even that know you? where this is. That? Is that, that you? Is, that, is, <laughs> that is terrible, Jones. That is the other oh, one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. I don't know what that is. He has this strategy on damnation. I guess that's where that name is came from. I don't. I, was damnation I never... after you play slowly? Because that. Yeah, yeah. That? That, yeah, that's why that, I was wondering. I'm like, are you the Loch Ness monster when you said yeah. that, and then I didn't get a chance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not even that I play slowly. I just hide in portal. And okay. I like I like to sit in portal and have like little melee battles, and it's really right. frustrating to the other team because I have a very uh, a very crafty way of getting my melees off. Going through portal, is the opponent tries to shoot me, I get back to the portal really quickly, and now I have the portal blocked. Is and the only way that they, they can come <laughs> through it is to fight me again. So right. people people just hate that I have that play style, and I love it. I I, I love frustrating the other team. So um, <laughs> Jones has a play style on that map. Which is awful. It does not work. Okay. Don't listen to anybody who says he it works. He swears by it. He, he can swear by it, but he can check all his wins against me in damnation, and it is very, very low. <laughs> like very low. Right. Um, 
he just hides and he doesn't hide. He goes down in Rocket Pit, which is the lowest area on the map, uh, and he just I don't know what he does down there. He dies. That's what he does. <laughs> dies. Dies. Is he waiting on camo or something? That's what I heard. He dies. He screws his teammate over, <laughs> and whenever his teammate does do something good, he's not in position to help. It's just a terrible place to be. I don't. I don't know why he does it. I hate it. I hate playing on his team when he's doing it. it it's awful. Okay. All right, well, a lot of shots fired at Jones here. One from McDick and now from you. So maybe he's got to change it or keep doing it, man. I mean, fuck the haters. Go for it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I want all, I, I, I want all the smoke, man. I wish people were more uh, had more fire. Uh, I, yeah. I, t- I say it all the time. I was much better player when I would go to lands and didn't know anybody and I didn't like anybody. And yeah. I just wanted to beat everyone. Like, I, I was much better player. Now everyone's all chummy. And yeah. it's just, you know, it's like playing your friends. It's not as fun. I think, and I, Mick Dick brought that up too. I think an important part of that was that you guys kind of, like you made it so that new players coming in the scene didn't really want to be a part of it because yeah. everybody was kind of trash talking. They were kind of brash in, in their attitude. So a new player would come in and be like, fuck it. Like, I don't, I don't want to learn how to play this game. Like these guys are just, you know, just shitting on me and it's not fun. Yeah. Uh, fucking trash. I'm just, I'm uh, to get, I tried to get away from that toxic attitude a little bit, right? but just... I, I don't know. It's just it's a that sweet spot, though, because I, I do think personality sells your game, especially a game that doesn't really have too much going for it as far as like content creation. Like the personalities is the only thing that's going to really, you know, blow it up. And I was thinking like on top of uh, watching yeah. those Beachland uh, videos, not having commentary on those like and then watching one with commentary like Beachland 5 had two commentators. I was like, damn, this is way more watchable. Like I'm actually engaged in this. Without the commentary, it's it's not the same. So like the personality is going to be so crucial, and and that energy, that passion, is what brings people into the community, right? Thank you, man. I, I'm glad you agree because uh, sure. I, I try to I try to push for this a little bit too. I try to make things testy and challenge people and talk shit. And I think it should happen at the highest level. Shit talking should happen because these are two, uh, two very oh, okay. dedicated, very committed teams that aren't going to back down if they're trash talk to but don't trash talk to new kids like yeah, nice yeah. I guess, kids. I guess that's trash true. talk your biggest rival and, I guess, and that's that's it you know i guess i guess the way i do it is i like to trash talk the new kids because i want to make sure that they're not soft. like <laughs> okay i want to I make sense. sure that they're going to come back yeah. you know i don't want some i you know i don't want to play with some kid who's going to cry anyway you know so I, sure. you know there's been there's been plenty of kids who came in have taken their lickings and now it's just fine you know we just uh-huh. we're all cool but I, I like the trash talk in the very beginning. Uh, I, maybe I should curb that. I don't know. I don't but know. I've been pretty bad sometimes. Well, you were know. doing it in that clip. But that's not also another reason why I brought brought up that first clip. Because at the very end, you're like, you're doing this shaking your head and you're teabagging. Uh, yeah. And then the word teabag comes on screen. You guys got like an uh, animation for it. It's like, yeah, I think, yeah. I, I, think, I think that play was actually yeah. like a really sick play. And it was like chaotic. I think I charged into camera room. Uh-huh. And I jumped over somebody's head and double meleeed him like on the way by. You did, and we were did. like, you we charged big... off his spawn and you did the double melee. And yeah. yeah, yeah, it was off his spawn too. Yeah, so we had like a big lead. So I just wanted to like you know, and and then I could hear everyone that was watching it in the there it is. like like explain screen. you know say whatever. And usually they boo us a lot. Those guys are yeah. haters. There's always <laughs> there's booing when we win and do stuff, and then there's cheering when we lose. It's it's all. Wow. But, so it's a cheer for the underdogs, maybe. That's yeah, yeah, they, they do that a lot. But then everybody complained when Mick Dick beat us. They're like, "You got, you got to beat them." And I'm like, "You guys always boo when we win, anyway. Like, you should have won to win." <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that that clip was sick. I wish it wasn't blurry. Is this John Fight's problem? Is this what? I I don't know what's going on. But we will show. Let's show the second one because we didn't really touch on the second one, oh, uh, exactly. which I can try to describe what's going on. The POV is a little bit larger, so you might be able to kind of identify mm-hmm. it. So. Throw up the uh, the it's UGC Halo Classic. Uh, just a moment when you guys are kind of you you were losing at first, and you swing it back into your control. Uh, and it starts with you are you're on the bottom, and Legends on the top. You have oh, sniper, okay. I believe, and you're going to get some snipes. Uh, you're going to get a free headshot on somebody, and then you just kind of control top map. You actually end up jumping down the, the classic OS grab as well, where you have the uh, the nade, and you uh, you time your nade throw when you pick it up. Yeah, there's the See headshot. See that little rat hanging out down there. <laughs> That I don't know who that was, but that is a that yeah. that's a play that's a play Mystic does. I hate that you just go down there like a little rat and trying to peek for some cheeky headshots. Um, so this is me getting an overshield, which I normally don't do. Um, right, apparently Sean's, that's what the Sean's hanging out red door, which I I would imagine we're going to push for portal soon. I don't know. Oh no, I'm not, am I out of camo? Oh, I'm out of camo. Um, see the, see the bottom screen. This is what Jones does. He fights down from this little. Terrible area where I'm at. Yeah. I, 
can't believe I just talked all that shit about it, and now I'm down there hanging. Oh, I'm getting rockets. Uh, okay, so it makes more sense. Taking, Bob, you have rocket sniping, and he so, has legend of sniping. Oh, he's so like looking. Pick up, pick up the rockets, and I immediately vacate. Jones would be down there letting them things fly up to the, <laughs> up to the universe, taking uh-huh. out. Uh-huh. Um, so I go, I scoop the camera real quick, jump to the right to avoid that nade. Uh, that was the nade for the camo, right? Somebody's trying to nade yeah. the camo down. Yes, uh-huh. they were going to nade it down. Probably whoever's in pit. See, whoever does, whoever just rocking in pit, I'm going to assume his name was Jones. Um, <laughs> just down there dying. He yeah. tries to nade down camo, but I stole it. And so now nothing's coming down. Someone else is in pit again. Probably Jones. Um, <laughs> yeah. just, it, it's just a terrible play style. I'm going to go back and watch this when we're done and see if that was him both times. Yeah. What I'm doing right now is I went back to greens to check for backspawns because they're probably giving a random from red. So I'm just checking our backspawns to make sure we're good. And Sean has the whole portal covered. So right now, the only way they can come up and get us is through that portal. Because I checked our whole backspawn. And unless they did something sneaky, like wait 10 seconds and then push green. So, but I'm doubling back now just to check green. That's where he was. I rocket him again. I'm going to go take this new camo. And then dip down. Since he came through portal, I had to drop down so he doesn't have an angle. And then I like this. Legend push, died here. Yeah, I'll push in the green. I'll give Legend the top spawn. They weren't watching it. I think... Oh, uh. uh, yeah, he must... See, when they got, when they shot at me and I dropped with camo, they should have immediately push through to take the, back the top control of the map, but they didn't. And then they let me spawn Sean back up top, and now we have top control again. Right. Um, it's just one of those things, whenever you get one dead, the way Sean and I play, you hit portal. You, you want to double port, you want to take control of the top map. And especially when they shot me with the camo and they saw me drop, mm. like, I don't know what they did. I would assume... One of them went back through portal, and then one of the dumbasses jumped out to overshield and got overshield and just uh-huh. wasted a bunch of time. And now me and Hashan have the whole control of the map. So, um, uh, damnation! I, I, you you want to push the pace a lot to to get control of the map, mm-hmm. and then once you have control of the map, then you can dictate it how you want. You can you can be the aggressor. You can sit back. You can say, "Oh, you guys got to come to us because the camo's up here." Um, most of the time, what you want to do is you want to push double port take control of the map. Once you have control of it, then swoop and swallow and go find out where they are and go kill them. Uh, right. We don't really sit back too much. We kind of take control and then go get kills, re-secure control, like, over and over and over and over. Right, it's all over. in line with when the weapons are coming up and stuff. There's, like, a kind of a, a rotation yeah. happening there. Yeah, like, yeah. All, you know, <clears throat> the best-case scenario is that you got the camo, you have top control, you kind of look around, you do process elimination of where they spawned, and then depending on where they're at, the camo guy drops down, starts hunting, and then don't die. <laughs> you don't yeah. want to, you want to, you know, pick your pick your fights where you can. So yeah. something like that. But yeah, it's so cool how it all plays out. And thankfully, you were able to kind of decipher what was going on. We can get your commentary on it because you had a lot of like insightful stuff to say there. And I, I love how this just the biggest thing just at the very end with the spawn system, I find so cool. Like they need to take advantage of that top map control when they have their opening. And if they don't, they don't block the spawn. You get that yeah. top spawn. And that's something that mm-hmm. you, you could never specifically spawn your teammate in a location in any other Halo game. Like, but in Halo 1, it's like this is a technique. Like, you know, to jump yeah. there to give them yeah. the top spawn. I would say that's kind of the uh, a big difference is obviously in the other games you're always thinking while you're playing like thinking while you're shooting and stuff like this. Sure. But this is always you always have some five second timer in your head. And that's that, why you have the timers going. You need to have a lady yeah. saying it to you because yeah. But no, I'm just so saying like it's just yeah. you know say Sean and I get a kill. Well, in five seconds that guy's coming back. So we right. are going to shoot a shot or two at the guy to see if if we can kill him. We will. But if not, we're gonna take away his line of sight, and we're going to kill the spawner right when he comes alive. And then yeah. on the flip side, if Sean or I is dead, then we have to think, can I get a kill without screwing my teammate over? Or do I want to run out and hope they kill me so I don't screw my teammate over? You want you, like there, you have to put, push the fight or back up you know, all the time. So the whole game is doing two things at once the entire time. Which also makes me think of just the classic style of Halo and how there's like a reasonable amount of like a, a human amount of predictability behind it. Like if you're if you're smart enough, if you if you're thinking quickly enough, you can predict all of these things and the the amount of speed that the player is going to get to that location and be ready mm-hmm. for it when it happens. Yeah. Uh, and then kind of juxtapose up against something like Halo Five, where you still have those elements of prediction. You're thinking about those things, but with so many different movement speeds, it doesn't make sense to uh to fully try to commit that to memory rather than just get in that power position be playing you know perfect technically and and you know just laser that guy down whatever it is uh, but it's so cool when you think about it in classic style being able to predict the, the timing of every single one of those instances is possible so you do it at the highest level you're thinking about all that stuff at the highest level so 
really cool. Uh, and hopefully we can get some semblance of that back in the next Halo game, uh, maybe by limiting, uh, you know, the movement options in some way, but still having, you know, some good high speed because I'm a fan of that in the game. Um, but yeah, it's just it's really cool to see that. And now, is this the same? What's this? This is uh, this is uh, UGC Finals. I can tell it's a uh, hang them high. So this I haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just saw on bottom screen. I was camo shotgun and I got the kill, but then I pushed for it and he dropped like a death nade. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my. And I pushed for too far and I died with like a brand new cam. And I was pretty oh, upset at myself. Shit. So I can remember that through the uh, <laughs> through these drunk goggles that John fights making me watch the game through. <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Yeah, but I, I mean, I know we crushed them. Hang on high is our best map. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm I'm fairly confident we smoked them. I mean, I know we smoked them because we beat them. I think we lost to Chile, their host, by like three, maybe. And then every other game was, uh, we beat them down. What would you say expected. is, uh, as expected, sorry. I had to, um, what would you say is kind of like your general strategy for something like this? Of course, camo control seems paramount. Yeah, uh, but this map, uh, luckily, the, the the strongest position on the map is dark blue, so top blue in the dark area. And luckily, my teammate is the best at controlling that. Like, Sean is <laughs> annoyingly good at being on that spot of the map. Like, so annoyingly good that you, like, question how you're going to attack him. Like, you'll be camo rockets, and you'll think, all right, do I want to come up big ramp? But if I come up big ramp, there's, like, always nades flying you. If I come up big uh, closed ramp, He's going to be staring at with a sniper. And you would think you would have the advantage. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm Emma Rockets coming around the corner. I know he's going to be there. He doesn't know when I'm coming. He's just looking for me. It's not an advantage against that dude. It's annoying. So <laughs> um, that's pretty much our style here is, I mean, obviously we're, we're good enough to flip-flop it, but uh, he's definitely better at holding top blue than I am. So that's where I want him to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, I just kind of be annoying. Uh, it, it's a big thing on Hang'em is one person be annoying other person clean up the kills. So mm-hmm. the one person's always pushing, like, say they get camo, well, then one of us has to go force the fight. Like, we need this camo guy to shoot at us so yes. we can then shoot back Heal at him himself. and kill him. Yeah, uh-huh. so you gotta you gotta just, uh, I don't want to call it bait, because when I'm going out there, I'm not I'm not looking to die, you know what I mean? But uh, right. I just want to go out there and get in a fight. <laughs> so that's all I want to do. And if I hurt right. this guy or wound this guy, it's up to my teammate to be staring and looking to finish the kill. Um, so that's kind of pretty much how you play the map. And uh-huh. the, uh, I'm sure some people know that the, the different part about this map Are we is launching like, something? Oh, you tried to launch something and died on the top screen. Sorry to interrupt you there. Oh, he's probably nading a sniper, as all Sean yeah. does. Um, uh, the thing about this map is more in line with the other Halos is you never know where the opponent's going to spawn because they're always giving a random spawn. Right. Um, a, lar- a large swath of the map in the middle and different places you can stand your teammate just spawns anywhere. So that that's kind of cool about that map, even though it's it's not in line with the way all the other Halo 1 maps are played. It's just different. Yeah. So, so you're, you're forcing just, random spawns on a regular. That's like the, yeah, is that yeah. the, how you counter the pressure from the other team is to continually try to random yeah. spawn. Yeah, and you you want to hope that you get a good random and then now you have crossfire on them. I mean, and 40% of the time your random sucks and you're you're right. you're, hike, you're hiking from across you're the map. Laser. But, yeah. It's just the way to play it. And then you'll get those ones where you spawn right behind a camo guy. And uh-huh. so that's why it's important for the camo guy to like put himself in a corner, watch his close spawns first, like slowly do that deduction. But I still yeah. I still play with people that, you know, don't even know where the other guy is and they start shooting on their camo. I'm like, you, Oh no. What what are you doing, man? You, <laughs> you're shooting. You don't know where the other opponent is. You're right. just bucking off. Yeah. That's what that's what dumbass Jordy does. Oh no. Sorry. Just, you gotta let everybody know. Really. How many before it's too many, you know? <laughs> and we're like, all right, we gotta lay off now. It's getting a little rough. Um, now, okay, so, you know, controlling the map, controlling spawns, that's one thing. You're launching, you know, weapons across the map. You've got the double beat down. You've got backpack reloads. And then you have some of these trick jumps. And we were talking about the fact that clearly couldn't bring a trick jump today for the uh, for the video and you said oh i have a trick jump that i did recently on damnation i was like fuck like show it to me and you uh, sent it to me on xbox dvr john has it we can take a look at it this is actually insane let's uh let's play the trick jump that we did recently oh so he's not yeah. Yeah. I, was, I wouldn't narrate it but it should speak for itself this is me doing something really nerdy that i've probably seen in a video 15 years ago i don't even know how to do it now I tried to recreate it the other night 
inhale. Um, so I'm throwing four, four sticky nades and then one frag using your shield to jump up. Oh, you got the knife and then headshot the guy on the way up. It's jumping over my teammate's head. So clearly we were playing terrible players. Or my teammate just let me get the kill because he saw what I was doing. Or he could have just been so enthralled with what I was doing, he stopped looking at his own screen. Right, don't, don't devalue the play here. You yeah. fucked him up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so he's camo, so he was able to he just tried his out. hardest, and you just sniped him in the head. <laughs> oh, you were camo, too, yeah. It takes a lot of time to pull this off as well. Like, you gotta, you're just standing there completely vulnerable. Yeah, yeah I'm down there. four nades down, and a frag? Like, down there Jones in it, not helping my teammate. Just down there, <laughs> not doing <Yeah>. anything. <laughs> that, was, that, was pretty, that was probably my only trick shot in my whole illustrious career. Because uh, I'm not very good at tricking. I'm not very good at, uh, there's, there's a bunch of, like, well, nade tricks I'm not very good at. And there's, like, weird little trick jumps that some people can do. I'm terrible at them. If I, if I really want to become the best, I have to learn stuff like that, and I just don't. Is, is nade jumping something that's very viable without the OS? Because, of course, with the OS, it's, it's a beautiful strategy. Like, yeah. you take zero damage, but without it, you're, you're tanking a nade. Like, yeah, you, that... would, you would think not, but that on Battle Creek, right. on Battle Creek, it, it it uh it helps a lot especially because you'll have you know you'll be top red or top blue and you just you check you check like your side where the jump up is and you think you're fine and all of a sudden you're getting shot in the back because someone may jump to the back of the base yeah so i mean it's obviously risky because if they just basically touch you once you're done but you may jump up you throw one nade you shoot one shot you get a kill so other than that um there's a there's a nade trick jump on Priz that uh, McDick does a lot that is useful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, off the top of my head, I think that's it. So Battle sure. Creek, you know, they jump on the <laughs> side of blue, back of blue, side of red, back of red. It, it helps a lot. Something that's really cool about that in general is just this balance of risk versus reward that you get with nade jumping, because it's something mm -hmm. that was present. You could do it in Halo 2, you could do it in Halo 3. I mean, all the Halo games, I guess you could do it, but it doesn't. you wouldn't do it in Halo 5 because you can hit those heights without it, right? So stuff yeah. like that. Um, but the cool thing about it is just that risk versus reward. Like it takes time to throw the nade. You hurt yourself throwing the nade, and then you get an advantage if you pull it off. And if if anything screws up in the process, you die. You're punished for it. How how can we get something like that back in Halo Infinite? You know what I mean? Like having it. Maybe maybe it's not as risky as punishing, but there still is that element of risk versus reward where you get that that vantage point if you succeed, but you're hurting yourself. You're waiting. You're losing time. Whatever it is, because I think that's something that that uh, was kind of a difficulty in Halo 5 was that you were given those advantages so quickly. And mm -hmm. as much as I love being able to get those advantages and pulling off that fancy tech, is there a way that you can still have advanced movement, fast gameplay, but more risk associated? Maybe you take some damage. Maybe you it's you have to set it up. I don't know. Uh, yeah. 343, what can you do? Try something creative. I, I don't know. Yeah. But, I, I don't know. You got to ask one of the better nerds than me, man. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's cool, uh, you know, just how that how that works. Uh, when you were doing it, though, is that does it ha have to be four nades, like four stickies, and then a frag? Or... Oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I think it needs to be. It definitely needs to be the frag because four stickies won't get you up there. It's got to be. So it's got. It Maybe be able to be three stickies and a frag, but I don't know. That's the uh -huh. way. Uh, Snippy Snap. That's. I saw him do it, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this shit. Yeah, uh, so so yeah. much going into that, right? Because then you're it has to be the angles that you're throwing them because a sticky nade detonation timer probably doesn't start till it either hits the wall or the floor or something like that. So you, yeah. you throw it really high, yeah. So then you that's can line you, up. That's the why you, you you keep on bringing it down. You know, yeah. you throw the one real high and you throw them a little bit lower. That's so um, on derelict, uh, you can nade jump top mid. Which, I mean, if you watch me play ten derelicts, I might do it once. I, I don't I don't agree with the uh -huh. the play. I was playing the other day with this dude Nacho, and he just does it so much, and it's so, it's just a death because yeah. you just you know the only time to do it is if you immediately get too dead and you're bottom middle, you just need to jump up top mid. But other right. than that, like he's trying to do it like off minute and stuff, just randomly. It's a terrible idea. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is like there's a lot of risk with that jump, and maybe maybe sometimes like it's so much risk that it's like, is it even worth ever going for? You know what I mean? So I wonder if they could make it so it's like more worth it, but still risky. Um, so uh, why Halo CE? Because of course you loved Halo CE, and I've, I think we've already kind of proven the the point on, on why. But at, at some point, I'm assuming Halo Two came out, and you're like, oh shit, I got to try this, or like Halo Three. Like, kind of what were your impressions when you played yeah. H Two and H Three? Why didn't you move on to those? Why did you go back to CE? Yeah, I think I think just the the initial iteration of Halo Two was just not not very good at all. I think mm -hmm. like if you just if it wouldn't have had all this luster of coming out and being the you know the 
<laughs> the just the follow up to Halo One, I don't think it would have got as much buzz as it did. Um, it just wasn't fun. Like we played it that night. I played it for a week or whatever. It just wasn't nearly as good. And then, but then a couple years later, it turned out to be a pretty damn good game. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's just. All, I mean, it's probably an age thing too. Like you know, I like I had a career and stuff. I you know, it's hard to like. All right, I'm gonna throw three more years into mastering and learning this game yeah. or you know, however long it takes me until yeah. the next thing comes out and just so yeah. something like that. I don't know, I just stuck with the game that I love. I think it's the best. I think it's the hardest. Um I I definitely don't know it all yet, you know, so it's just so deep. Um I definitely not the most talented. It just takes a lot. You, there's so much to learn, there's so much to do. Yeah. Uh, it's just the best game for sure. Um but the other Halos are fun, all the ones that I played. I probably I played a lot of Halo Three, but just with just like other Halo kids online, just like for fun. They're like good games, but they don't have that uh that replay value. Not for me, at least. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean that was something that I realized. Like when you brought up the point about Halo Two, you're like, you know, when it came out originally, my my first impressions of it right out the box, it just it wasn't as good. It, it wasn't as fun. A Halo C kind of had more nuance, more difficult. But then you know, down the line, a couple of years later, you're saying, oh shit, there's there's button combos, there's BXR, yeah. there's double shot. There's, uh, you know, these crazy trick jumps. There's, you know, like maybe it's a little bit easier to shoot, but I was saying, yeah, as a result, you get these crazy overkills of the sniper that you might not ever see in Halo C or something like that. And then that gives, uh, you know, viewers uh, incentive to watch it. So there are a lot of people who will say like Halo 2 is like they'll covet that as the best Halo ever. And then Halo 3 isn't as skilled or whatever. But Halo 3 from a team dynamic has like incredible nuance, like like being able to, to change up dirty weapons, like changing up the timer on weapons. That's like yeah, yeah. unheard of in any other Halo game. And that's that's freaking sick like yeah. that's like from a from a team play aspect that's that's so there's so much nuance there so it's like all of these games have a lot of depth that that is you know discovered maybe minus halo 3 because i was saying halo 3 is like the perfect storm like it came out at the perfect time came out for xbox 360 everybody was on the halo train and people just they, they loved it from day one but it's like every other game it starts like without the bang that it kind of needs to really you know ex explode and be ultimately successful it kind of takes time to get there and then people realize oh you know it's actually a pretty sick game like two years later like yeah. same thing happened with halo reach same thing happened with halo 5 halo 4 nobody gave a shit but <laughs> it's just it, it's interesting kind of uh how things have changed and it also makes me think like guys halo infinite is going to come out it's going to be a different game regardless like it's going to be different than all the other halo games and you know at first glance Maybe you won't love it, whatever it is. But I feel like we need to, instead of immediately dis dismissing something, just try to grind it out a bit and you know try to form a, a good opinion about it and maybe have have a bit of that back and forth. Like I know three four three is doing what they can to to make it easier to communicate with them and to make those changes and and update it in the future. I just uh, I hope that we don't immediately dismiss it if it doesn't have one thing that you don't like. So uh, mm -hmm. they have Sprint. All of a sudden, oh you know Halo's fucked. It's never going to succeed. Like, <laughs> g give it a shot. Maybe it's going to be sick. Like yeah, I don't yeah, know. Like yeah. hopefully they change it and they 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 listen and and you know we get something awesome. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just <laughs> wait for uh, I wait for the other Halo kids to play it and they, they'll let me know if it's worth yeah. it or not. You know, yeah, I'm not, so. I'm not. I'm not the guinea pig of it. So sure, we'll see. Sure. You'll you'll let me know, man. I I'll let everybody know. I'll, I'll make some videos. Uh, so what do you think of Halo C's community today? Is it still growing, or is it how's it uh, doing? You know, I, as much as I love it and everything, I'm always just going to try to be a realist about that and everything else. It's just, it's you know, I, I don't blame anybody who's not getting into it. I mean, there's a lot to learn. It's older equipment. It's hard and all that. But if you want a very good challenging game that is rewarding then it's the game you should be playing i mean one of the games you should be playing um but yeah i mean the community's still growing i mean slowly but surely so i uh, just talked to mcdick today he said he's got he said i got two new kids that i, I guess are two like new super kids cool. and i'm oh, like yeah. what i don't he like manufactures them in a lab or, <laughs> i don't know yeah that's what he yeah. does with all the beach land money probably he's paying noobs to be honest, um, the scene's getting so old that it's the kids of the players who who became you know enthralled with it in the first place that are playing yeah. the game, right? Like, so if you, you Halo Halo One comes out and you're like, you know, nineteen or something, let's say when you play Halo One, you fall in love with it. You have a kid, you train him on Halo One. Maybe he's like fifteen now or some shit. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's playing it. Um, yeah, we. I think, I think the kid who's staying in my Airbnb at Beachland. I think he said he's twenty. I don't know. Tony's got super young. Tony's young for Halo CE, I guess. Yeah, I don't know where he came from. Halo's twenty, so I don't know. Right. I don't know. Right. But uh, there, there's some good young kids. Um, and yeah, slowly there's just adding new people. I wish MCC kids would come. Uh, right. Because there's tons of tons of, you know, 
good kids on MCC who, uh, <laughs> you know, will will be in Twitch chats and will be talking and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, it's basically the same game. Like, if you know all the spawns and you know all the strategy and where to go and what to do, like, you got to, you know, come prove yourself. I'm sure. You're, and I, I have probably more respect for the MCC kids that do finally come out and play. Like, I love those guys. I love right. the fact that they played something and they, then they put themselves out there to then come play you know the other best players and like see where they see where they land i like that a lot um yeah. so just mcc kids and uh, more of them to show up and then any uh, you know especially all the, like the halo 2 halo 3 kids halo reach kids all those guys like i mean they're playing a good game but if you want to play a good game that can be individually rewarding or you can put a team on your back and carry uh it's it's the and, and also the duo thing like we're, we we play twos so mm -hmm. you can stand out more you know, you don't get lost in the sauce of this four-man team. Um, I just like that, man. Uh, so that's what we need. Yeah. Yeah, I think Halo C is kind of the one game where duos is the main focus as far as competitive goes. All the other games have very fun doubles. Like, we just had an H3 doubles tournament, like, with Red Bull, and that was sick. Um, but, yeah, like, H1, that's the main way to play competitively, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I believe so. I mean, we definitely... <laughs> I've played... I mean, everyone played fours, like, especially when, when you went to bigger tournaments, like, sure. back in the day. Yeah. Um, I won a 4v4 tournament at the Kansas tournament. I won a 4v4 tournament at MLGLA. Um, but the 4v4 is just, you know, you got four people who are on host against mm. four people who are off host. It's, you know, it's not very fair. Right. Um, yeah. And because of the equipment in the game, you know, it, it can become a little laggy, a little bit of uh, frame rate issues. But it's just not nearly as fun. Um, it's more spawn killing, spawn killing, spawn killing. Like, like every... Yeah. Game. I mean, there's obviously some exceptions, but you could put like the funnest game type is King of the Hill derelict, and it's just or King of the Hill. I mean, or capture the flag derelict, and it's just spawn killing the entire time. And if I'm a new player, I'm not the hell if I want to play that. You know, right, you're, out right. for, you're out for ten seconds, you spawn, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. You're out for ten seconds, you spawn, you're dead. Like you don't want right. that. No, that's terrible. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you heard when we were talking about news earlier, but apparently MCC uh, PC, of course, that's coming out. They're doing a lot of things to change and fix MCC, add new new stuff to it, like customization and whatnot. Uh, one of their footnotes was that they're trying to bring Halo CE back to its original form as much as possible while mm -hmm. they port it over to PC. What do you think of something like that? Like, let's say you're playing Halo CE in its original Xbox form on the PC version and on your Xbox One. What does that do yeah. for the Halo CE community? I mean, I, I think that... I can't speak for everybody, but I think the main issue with MCC was just the hit registration or, or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Um, you know, you would just you just shoot 12 shots at a guy and he doesn't die. And I'm like, look, mm -hmm. I've played Halo a long time. I don't shoot 12 shots in a situation. I, you shoot 18 shots. I mean, you shoot. Sure. It, it's like, I don't know where the bullets are going. And you, obviously, like in Halo 1, I said, I, I said this to you before off camera, like, you know, you feel like you did the perfect thing and, you know, you're like, you didn't get the kill. Like, that was a three shot. But in mm -hmm. MCC, it's like, that was an 18 shot. Like, there's <laughs> there's, there's a big difference here. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Th it, that's really, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that fix. I, I think that's like the net code or, or something like that. Um, I'm definitely not nerdy enough to know it. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, they fixed that. I don't need, you know, if a shotgun's turned this way and not this way or, you know, whatever these little bug fixes that people got going on. From what from what I know, MCC is pretty good, um, but it's just not good enough. You know, it's just from a shooting standpoint. I mean, you just shoot, and it just sucks. So, so and but, that sounds like a totally reasonable fix too. Like just fixing hit detection, like hit registration. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, like, that's I, some I, basic stuff that you anybody. Yeah, I don't know if it's something because it's uh, you know projectile based or something like that. Sure. If it makes it hard to do, I, you know, I don't know, but it just sucks. So whatever that whatever they need to fix to stop that, and I think everybody would be on board. I don't think anybody would, a lot. I mean, a lot of us do play MCC. Um, yeah. I don't think there's a big, um, big cry against it. It's just it's it's not the same from a purist standpoint because we're so used to playing split screen, and you don't have most people don't have the ability to have a, a really good friend close by who you can play split screen with. Um, yeah. But I mean, if you, if if it could if if they would just fix that, even if it was just host had an advantage and all hosts was just a little bit laggier. I mean, we all played that way on XPC for years and all of us were fine. So, I mean, it makes the game challenging. I mean, can't really complain about that.
that does seem like the, the best thing they can do is just to try to to fix this issue and do whatever they can to bring it back to its original form would be, from what, at least my opinion, would be the best way to kind of, you know, help grow the community, help introduce new players to the game. Mm-hmm. It's part of a package. It's so easily accessible. You play Halo 3, jump on Halo 1 like yeah, a second yeah. later. Um, as far as the, the shot registration detection goes, uh, I, I was reading Reddit about it. I got these like posts that I could read. Uh, the the one that you talked about as far as like shots not registering, uh, that's in here too. But first of all, this guy says for one, it's laughably easy to hit shots at MCC compared to OG, like sniping and pistoling in particular. In particular, uh, on OG, your movement had a huge impact on where your shot would land. If you're straight yeah. to the left, you need to place your reticle to the right. Uh, you need to place each shot carefully. In three shots, kills were rare, even at the highest level. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. There have been a few updates to MCC to mimic this movement-based aiming, but none so far have felt the same as OG on MC. You could put MCC. You could put your reticle anywhere nearby and get a hit. Uh, take a player with decent OG aim to, and put him in MCC, and you'll see uh, you'll see games with multiple six-shot double kills. Uh, something that you couldn't even make uh, into an OG montage or something. Which so apparently it's easier to hit those shots, but then the hit detection sucks because there's another kid just like you know right below him who says. Uh, I think aiming at MCC is much more difficult. I can't hit anything, and sometimes I shoot twelve and reload and ask myself, "Did I hit him once?" <laughs> yeah, well, they're talking yeah. about they're talking about two different things. Two the different first, things. Time, mainly referencing yeah. sniping, when yes. sniping is laughably easy, uh-huh. everyone can snipe. But pistoling is just—I don't want to say it's a crapshoot, but I, you know, I have no idea what's going on with the pistoling. It's just—it mm-hmm. literally goes from easy to non-existent. People, it, everyone says people are like eating bullets. You know, you just got a guy jumping in at you in a straight line. So like, you know, you're, you you don't have a chance of missing and you're not killing it. So the sniping, I don't want to say it's fine because like like the person originally said, the, it's not movement based. Like if you strafe against your shot, you still hit, you know, perfectly. You don't have to compensate. And right. the compensation is what the skill gap is all about. And it's yeah. what separates people. So, yeah, I mean, you fix that, but, you know, if everybody can snipe, I mean, everybody can snipe in every other Halo, so whatever. But fix the pist- fix the pistoling is the, the real main thing for me. Yeah, so hopefully they could do something like that. I think that would, would be the best thing, because I was also thinking, like, uh, Smash Bros. Melee, for example, has something called the Dolphin Emulator, where, of course, they don't have, like, an MCC or a remaster or whatever, but people will download the game on their PCs, and it plays flawlessly. They get the, the instant response with their gaming monitors, um, and they can even play online. There's a whole, like, online system built called Smash Ladder. Um, would this work for Halo CE? I mean, if, if they fix MCC, it wouldn't even be necessary. And I guess if somebody did try to mod and do some sort of an emulation thing, then Microsoft might crack down and uh, and shut that down. I don't really know how it works with Microsoft. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then the the other thing that McTick brought up was uh, about getting the Halo CE source code to mod yeah. the game. That's and kind of just can, one of those you things. Can make it even better be, than its original version. Apparently. Yeah, you got to be a realist about it. I mean, I don't. Right. I know nothing into intellectual property, like how people handle those things. I know other games have just released it, you know, uh, x amount of years into their lifespan and just let people expand upon it. I mean, I don't really. Just from a you know common sense standpoint, see what the objection to it is. But sure, I mean we could do a lot. Like I, I've even like you know I've thought about it in my head. I'm like, you know, if you could contact someone and talk to them and be like, look, just we'll fly, you know, to wherever Seattle or wherever the hell it is. I don't know where the hell that Bungie or three four three keeps the shit. Um, uh-huh. we'll take a week, fix the things we need to fix. Put it on a flash drive, fly home. So we can't fix it ever again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let us just make the changes we need to make. Uh-huh. I don't want this. I don't want the source code. I don't want to have it for the rest of the time. I just, just want to make the changes. Yeah, just make the changes because you could take a very good game and you could just, you know, I'm not saying perfect it, but you could make it amazing. Like you yeah. could just with some little small things, it, it would be insane. But uh, it's probably just a pipe dream because, you know, I don't know. You're talking about some huge companies and some small grassroots thing saying hey let's access to your right <laughs> intellectual property I, you know right I, don't know. I was thinking you got to get like ogre 2 to get a hold of ninja or something and be like you know ninja i'll, I'll advertise your next halo game if you yeah. give me the source code for a week or yeah. some shit I, yeah. yeah i mean <laughs> I don't know, just leverage it's, yeah it's, you leverage your connections it's definitely yeah. frustrating to think about and we've thought uh-huh. about it you know yeah so much the things we could do but it's just the boat we're in you know I know we're waiting on the emulators. So once the kids working on the emulators get it done. I don't know. 
So I uh, kind of jumping away from it for one second. Of course, we have Halo Infinite that's on the horizon. That's the next big thing for Halo. Um, do you play a variety of games currently or is it just mainly CE? I know when I saw your game clips, you're playing like Killing Floor 2. And Killing Floor uh, 2 is like your main your main game. Uh, apart from pathetic. that, are you looking forward to Infinite or what is pathetic? Um, what? Like, uh, well, just the amount of hours I put in. The only, oh, yeah. the only saving, the, the only uh, good thing about it is that I've played so much Killing Floor 2, and the sensitivity on Killing Floor 2 is outrageously high. And okay. I came back to Halo, and I was like, what? This is the slowest thing I've ever played. So I bumped my sensitivity up to 8, which is faster than I think anybody, and I feel <laughs> fine. So I'm, think, I'm thinking about moving it higher after Beachland. I'll see how I play. Um, yeah, so I'm just bumping my sensitivity up. I've, I've like, I've put so many hours in, I'm, I'm just used to it now. So that's the only thing. Um, Halo Infinite, I'll just, like I said before, I'll, I'll let, you know, some of the Halo guys play it and I'll just hear feedback on it. If they say it's good, I'll play it. I mean, just like I've done with every other one. Yeah. Any impressions on the trailer or anything you've seen so far? Oh, uh, no, I don't, I don't keep up with it like that, man. No. I, 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 I just, once someone else tells me how it is and I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. As far as like trying to be competitive in it, I don't know if I, cause I, I have, I have an, I have the, I'm the type of person like I'll either dive all the way in and right. then i just will will lose my social life or <laughs> i'll play it and i'll get super frustrated when i lose the kids that i don't think i should lose to sure so either way it's a bad thing either and then if you get frustrated i'm assuming you just don't touch it anymore or, yeah or, or, yeah, yeah. Then, then i just <laughs> i just can't go near it because if if, the, if i'm losing the kids i shouldn't lose to i'm gonna be pissed off right. and if i throw my social life out the door and just dive into this video game i'm like well you know i, I can't do that at my age man so right. I'll stick with my hobby of Halo 1. I'm good with that. True, true, true. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely picking it up first day. I'm not I'm not going to wait on it. But uh, but hopefully it's great. I think we all kind of got our fingers crossed that, uh, that you know, more, more of a community comes to Halo. Because I think at the end of the day, like, if that game pops off, it's only good things for every other Halo game for the entire franchise. So. Is it going to be on Xbox One or is it next-gen console? I believe it's still going to be on Xbox One, but it's it's mm. being designed for the next console. So it's going to be a launch title with the Scarlet, but I think it's, it's still playable on Xbox One. Honestly, I don't even know how that's going to work because they're, they just like when we were looking at the news a second ago there's limitations on the original xbox one that makes it so that they can't even give us flighting yeah. just yet because they they can't do unreal engine plus uh, uh what is the new customization system if that can't happen then i don't know how the heck you yeah. know infinite's gonna run so maybe maybe i'm just yelling out false information maybe it's exclusive on scarlet i don't know um but it would be nice if it's as accessible as possible like having it on pc massive win having it on the yeah, next yeah. xbox great but put it on as many platforms as you can um yeah. Uh, so the next question I have is uh, about what does the competitive landscape look like for Halo C today? Like any specific players threaten your spot uh, mm. on the top with Legend? And then what about the Ogres, which you already kind of did your whole shout out. But if you want to uh, touch on that again, I know we have Halo Classic 2 coming up as well. Um, so as far as the skill level, I, there was a there was a period of time where every LAN and for the most part tournament that I went to, I felt like I was way better than everyone. And then. I don't know what happened. Either I got worse, everyone got better, I cared less or something. Probably right. everyone got better. I started going to lands. I'm like, everyone is really good now. Like, uh -huh. I, you know, this is this is crazy. So everyone is really good. The competitive landscape is very high level sure. with you know, all the people who still attend, come and all that. Um, as far as threats, it's just um, if if we both play a decent amount, so we're both kind of fresh. Uh -huh. which i've been more fresh recently than i was last year um so we're both warm i don't think i just don't think we'll lose i don't think anybody can really beat us i right. think if we sit down at a land and we play a bunch of really good kids over and over and over and over yeah we're gonna lose but mm -hmm. um just as far as super competitive important games sitting down and playing and we're both good to go i think we're i think we're the best and i think yeah. Ogre 2 would have to grab somebody and do the same thing to beat uh -huh. us. You know, he, him, or, you know, I'm not even going to say Dan, because I know Dan moved away and doesn't play. But um, uh -huh. they Ogre 2 would have to get another really good player. They'd have to land a lot, be fresh, and then we'll see who's better. Um, I, yeah. You know, I, but, you know, they're not beating us. It's kind of, it's like a sports thing. Like, uh -huh. 
no, I'm not. No one's going to beat us. I'm not going to say anyone's going to beat us. It's just right. it's crazy. Why would you? It's, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy mentality to have. And yeah. then you see, like, there's going to be people that after this are going to be like, oh, this idiot says he's better than Ogre too. I'm well, like, fuck the haters once again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to say? I'm going to lose? Like, it's an yeah. insane proposition. It's why? Yeah. Why are you even attending? Why are you even playing the game, man? Uh, I mean, like, uh, yeah. 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 So you know, losing to those suckers, man. Uh, you can't that's you have to have a winning mindset and if that comes off as cocky i think that's the thing is like some people are afraid to be because they don't want to be cocky right but confidence is necessary to succeed so you need to be confident i think cockiness is when you're kind of shitting on other people you're saying i'm yeah. specifically better than this person this guy sucks whatever it is and you're like that's kind of where the cockiness comes into play you could avoid that and still be incredibly confident in your own skill and and talk about how you you know you believe that you win you believe that you're you know capable of being the best yeah. player whatever it is yeah they, they um, want without you, being they cocky want you- they want you to believe it, but they don't want you to say it. Sure. They want you to have that belief in you, oh, but yeah, not, too. Yeah. Not, not say yeah. it. And I'm like, so you want me to be a liar? You want me to be disingenuous? <laughs> sure, like, sure, sure. yeah, if you ask me, I'm no, I'm not going to lose. I'm, there's no way. And I'm not going to lose to Sean either. So <laughs> Sean wants to split up. I'm going to beat his ass too. But Sean did, Sean did beat me. Uh, we had a, we had a tier based tournament, and uh, yeah. he had to play with a you know, a, a, a lower ranked player and I had to play with a lower ranked player and he beat me in the hey, finals. So I guess he has the 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 most recent claim to fame over me. I don't know. He hey, sucks. Too, whoever it was. <laughs> <laughs> our teammates. Name Jones for no reason. No. Yeah, Jones. Yeah. <laughs> our, our teammates were pretty bad. So. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Well, uh, as far as what's coming up in the near future, uh, what any kind of like goals as far as Halo CE goes, just I guess you know, kind of try to remain at the top. You've got Halo Classic too. I believe you're going to be at that. Is that the, the next big uh, thing for you? Yeah, I mean, we, so we got Beef Clan in a couple days. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, Tuesday starts on Saturday, so uh, we'll have that, and then I think the tournament's Monday, Tuesday, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. I could be saying that wrong. Um, yeah, just go in there with the same mindset as always: win, try to get better. Um, and then go to Atlantic City. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty pumped for Atlantic City, too. I hope, you know, all these chumps come out and show up. So, uh, and go go there and win that, man. I, I don't know. It's I've, I've had the same goal, same mindset for a long time. I, I, yeah. I take the game serious. I usually play very serious. I do not want to lose. I hate losing more than I like winning. So right. that's just that's just how I am. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people give Sean and I shit, but... Uh, I'm gonna play serious with him all the time. Not try to lose. Like I, I'm disappointed when we drop a game, right. especially at tournaments. And huh. we we dropped a game at St. Louis. We lost Beachland. We dropped a couple games at Beachland before that. We dropped one game to Beachland before that. So we've actually we actually gotten worse. <laughs> so either we cared less or everyone's gotten better. One of the two. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I just want to get back to that mindset. Just not drop a game. Not lose. When I first started getting really good, I was had a really bad attitude about losing like i would lose off host online and be furious right. so i don't have that anymore I, I don't know it becomes soft i guess but so try to get back to that and yeah just win both tournaments I'm soft yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh just yeah. win both tournaments hopefully the best kids come out that want to play and want to compete and just go from there and hopefully we can come out and show out and uh they do it again you know if they do it again i'll be there for sure yeah Man, I mean, I'm looking forward to AC. I'll be meeting you there as well, hopefully. Uh, oh, I will you're be going? there. Yeah. You're coming into going. the States? Uh, I'm coming into the States. I can't oh. wait. Uh, there's so much to look forward to because you, you got Halo C. There's a big Halo 3 event. There's even Halo 5, which is uh, I'm an H5 kid. So I'm going to love that too. Uh, so, so much to look forward to. And, and yeah, a ton of great people to beat. So I'm, I'm literally like, are that's they, like are the they biggest gonna thing. Are they going to let you into the country? Uh, they, they might. I, I'm going to have to pull some strings. And, Getting dicey uh, these days, man. Yeah, I got, you know, over here in Toronto, we've got completely legal marijuana. This is a whole other thing. (laughs) I'm not going to talk about whether or not I'm going to try to bring some over. But anyway, no, but it'll it'll be a sick time. I'll find my way across the border and uh, and I can't wait to meet you there, man. Uh, Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I completely agree with the mindset too. Like you, you need to be, you know, confident to win these games. I think how you take those losses is very is very important too. Like you look at somebody like Tox Gaming; they're the uh, the top of Halo right now. Even mm-hmm. when they win, they still find ways to like, and they're not like criticizing themselves. They're just thinking, what can I do better next time? Even when they win, you know, even yeah. if they win every single game in the series, they're still thinking about you know what what yeah. potentially went wrong without shitting on themselves in any way. It's just how can I continue to improve? How can I continue to level up my gameplay and just having yeah. that. 
that ultimate mindset for success. So that's how earlier when I was looking at that that fuzzy uh, hang em bit, I, I remembered when I died with that camo. Like I remember when it happened. <laughs> I remember yes. being very mad. <laughs> and it was kind of just like it was a mistake on my part, and it's just like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn from those little things, you know, uh -huh. gradually. Yeah. So that actually covers all the questions I have for you today. We do Ooh. have some questions in the chat, though. So I'm gonna read out some of these a guys. Bunch of uh, troll questions, no a bunch doubt. Of troll questions, probably. Yeah. Uh, the first one we got here is Dino Mike Mora says, "Who would win, a four Hearth uh, or Finny in a one v one? A fight? Uh, a one v one? I don't know if it's a, a real fight or a Halo fight." I think he means a fight, man. <laughs> he says well, 1v1, which makes it sound like a, a video game, but hey. Forhearth is a fake tough guy, so he might be talking oh, yeah. about fighting. But uh, in 1v1, Forhearth is... Well, I don't know. Maybe he's a 1v1 god, but he's terrible at Halo. So oh, shit. I'm, giving, I'm giving the nod to Finny. Finny, uh, Finny looks like Rachel Maddow. You know that chick? You oh. might not. She's not American. She's not oh, good. shit. Yeah, he looks like a... Rachel Maddow. <laughs> I'm not all. sure you ever want to look like, you know, I, I got Rachel McAdams here. Rachel what? Mad Maddow. Maddow. M a d d o w. That's what that's what Finny looks like. Oh, okay, so, all right. They one v one fight. Like I mean, her. you don't want to mess with Rich. She she looks like somebody you don't want to mess with. Oh yeah, she'll, she'll, she'll she's she's um, <laughs> Finny's pretty good at Halo though, so I'll take Finny in that. In that. Uh -huh. All right. Well, Finny's gonna take the one v one. Says. So uh, Says Patch. Oh, we got Kazir Patch. Hopefully Kazir is how you say that. Patch, uh, will you be streaming your local lands in the future? Hmm. I, you know, we just, we we land the other day for a couple of hours or so, and I had two incredible plays, like two r ridiculous plays, and I was really mad that we weren't streaming. And Shoot. I told myself that we're only streaming lands from now on. But to, to make that happen, I have to get Mystic to go along with it because I have to use his computer to stream. So I, I want to, though. I, I, I will push towards doing it, and I will not be lazy about getting it set up. So whatever that kid's name was, Kaiser or whatever, we'll try, man. We'll try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's what we need. That's how you, you know, you can, first of all, capture the amazing moments that you apparently, yeah. because they're, it's not real until they're it, gone it's, now. They're, <laughs> they're gone now. I never have a each time. So <laughs> Jordy this. and Wraith. Both yeah. seen these plays and they were making a test to it in court when uh, you do the case. <laughs> <Yep. or whatever. laughs> uh, we got Reaper Choose as Patch. Uh, where the where's the better Halo player in your house? Is that, do you know this person, <laughs> Reaper uh, Choose? Well, uh, I I happen to live with like another top five player, so oh, we, have, okay. we have a good household. So, okay. Uh, anybody who wants to host on XLAN. They can they can get punished by the by me and Kevy for sure. I live with Nistic and he's he's incredible. Okay. So, uh, it's if if me and him aren't being lazy and we want to land, we we have the opportunity to have really good games. So awesome. We're lucky. And you're saying you you need to nag him about his computer or whatever. Well, if he's if he lives with you and he's right next yeah. door, I guess. You can, <laughs> yeah. But like I said, I start the nag. <laughs> yeah, so. you got to start the nag. Yeah. Uh, Battle Mike Mora again says, "Who would win a one v one on Prisoner? You are legends." Oh, I'm 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 winning that for sure. Yeah. I mean, not for sure because you have to host, and the other person has to host, and oh, you have to. Oh, like, that's always calculate. the issue. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I I am, I am. I have a very good full screen shot, and I'm a very good one v one prisoner player because I've probably played hundreds of one v ones against Jordy, and because he's so annoying and he loves playing them. So right, and and he made his name one v one God, and I beat him fifteen zero. Wow. So I, I always rem remind him of that. But I've played a lot. So I've probably played way more of that game type. I think I think I got the nod there. All right. We'll have to wait and see. They should put something like that together in, uh, in St. Or why am I saying St. Yeah. Louis? In, uh, in yeah. AC. There's been talks about that, of like, yeah. especially Beachland. Like a little side event like little, or something. Yeah, it's like I little things like that. I don't know if like around. Get him to cast it or something. I'm, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Silos, uh, what's the dumbest mistake you see people constantly make? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> other than play any other game than Halo CE. Um, <laughs> common mistake. I mentioned it earlier, but it's, it's kind of map specific. It's hang them high. When people are camo and they shoot without knowing where both enemies is, that happens all the time, and it drives me nuts. As far as overall, um, it's kind of just a common thing that happens to everybody. Everybody wants to get the sick play. Everybody wants to get a double kill. Everybody wants... The kill to go to them, you know, 
instead of just letting their teammate do it. It's just one of those things. It's just like greed. Everyone's yeah. greedy. So it's just if you get that little bit in your mind to not be greedy. But you have you know, there obviously are times where it's advantageous right. to do go for it. Yep. So you have to play enough to figure out when those situations are and when they aren't. And just back down, let your teammate do it. I mean, I can't tell you how often my teammate pushes a 50-50 fight that they don't have to because within two seconds I can come around the corner and finish the guy. Mm. And it, it should it could be me communicating that better, saying like I'll I'll, I'll finish him, I'll kill him, like I'll do it. But it's also, you know, <clears throat> you know, maybe I don't say it enough or maybe I don't say it at all. But the other person just has to know like, all right, if I back down, I'm safe. That other guy's in the middle of the map, my teammate's probably gonna get the kill. But mm -hmm. everybody wants the stats at the end of the game, you know? So everybody wants that kill next to their name and not their opponent, not their teammates, which is a selfish thing, but it's just yeah. what we all do. And it's also kind of boring, you know. You want it, it's more fun to get the double kill or more right. fun to kill. So, you know, nobody wants to play boring. So something like that. So some kind of kind of combination of patience and selflessness, but also yeah. hyper awareness to know the scenario when you should actually go for the yeah. Uh, challenge. Yeah. yeah. So I mean it's it's definitely not like an easy mistake, but it's just it's common for sure. It's common, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I might butcher this name, Keel Keel. Uh, K E I L T V K E L T V says, uh, "What are some good OG Xbox controllers available for somebody who hasn't land CE recently, or, or what kind of controllers are the top guys using nowadays?" Good question. Uh, I know for uh, uh, Smash Bros, like the GameCube controller is coveted. Like you got to go to Japan and get the original version of it. You don't want the ones with like the Smash logo; they're just not as good. Uh, anyway, well, if, if I were <laughs> that guy, this is what I do: I go on eBay, okay, put an original Xbox controller S type. You don't have to put S type in now. And just go through those. And people are just selling used ones or ones in the package. And just click on the picture, zoom in, make sure it's make sure it's like first party, and make sure the thumb still has the little nipples on it. And they're like fifteen, twenty dollars or whatever. I'll wow. probably buy like you know, say I buy five and like one like won't work or whatever, and you just kinda gotta chalk it up. So that's that's how I get all my controllers. I just interesting. I don't I don't Mick Dick has bought all the ones in the brand new package. So if you want a real controller dm mcdick and you know tell him to stop monopolizing the the market wow. but I, just, I bought the used ones man uh, the the new ones in the package are they way more expensive i'm assuming there's like yeah. collector items yeah i i probably i still have a couple i think i still have three that are in the package um okay. you want to buy them when they're like around 45 dollars. it's probably like the cheapest you'll see them but mm -hmm. they're usually 80 i think is the number right around there and I don't, i'm not paying all that did you ever check out the, the remake of the duke did you ever see that did that come out? I thought it I just out. saw. Oh, I thought I saw an article that it was coming out. Um, it came out with a fizzle for sure. I feel like it was no, very was much never, a sleeper. I was, yeah, like, I was never a uh, Duke player, so I didn't even consider it. Uh, um, okay, okay. I got a brand new Duke in the package, though. If there's any Duke players out there, I'll sell it to them. Do, are know. there people who swear by the Duke over the S controller? I think, I think everyone's gone away from that just because okay. of the, yeah, the rarity of it. You know, uh -huh. once stop working or whatever like that. I don't. I, I don't know anybody that plays a Duke. Interesting. Sure. Uh, uh, Doughboy is sick. What are your thoughts about talk, uh, taking out one of the best measurements of individual skill in the Beachland tournament by not having an FFA? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't <laughs> agree that that is the best measurement of a player. But, uh, okay. Doughboy, like for instance, I don't care about free for alls, but Doughboy hasn't finished better than me in any of the free for alls yet. So Ooh. I think it went. I think Sean has won each one that he's participated in, mm -hmm. and I've taken. I think I took second, second, and then I think I took like sixth the next year or something like that. I finished top eight each time, and I don't give a shit about free falls. So <laughs> what, <laughs> what is the boy talking about? A little savage, but we'll take it. Uh, so why did they take it out though in the first place? Is it just like not as popular as the other? I think they just look at it as a waste of time. A lot of people are coming to mm -hmm. Beachland for the experience of landing, sure. and they don't want to have a block of time where, oh, I have to participate in this free-for-all. Mm -hmm. So I think, I mean, it's it's fun and everything, but it's just not as fun as playing choose with who you want to play with. Right, right. So I think it's just a waste of time for most people. All right, now final question, and this is apparently highly requested from chat. Uh, Maryland Madness tournament results run down mm -hmm. from your perspective, Patch. Hold on, the results run down. Oh, uh, the rundown? Yeah, the results. What did uh, I guess? What did you think of it? Or... So that was, I think that was my like my first tournament where everyone knew I was good. 
And so we go. I'm playing really good. We uh, we get to the fight. We get to the. What the hell did we do? We won winners bracket. Oh, we, we won winners bracket finals. We won against mm-hmm. Nist and Saiyan, and okay. we won that. And then we get to the final finals. But the two scumbags that we played against, Commando and uh, Eleven, they okay. had they had gotten knocked out. They got knocked into the lose bracket earlier. And then when we got to the final finals, they argued that they should have still had host advantage because they had they were a higher seed from free for all. So they argued that they should still have host advantage. FFA comes they, in once again here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but I, I I don't know this for sure. I'm not a tournament organizer. Oh. Um, but I'm pretty sure that when you lose, you lose your seed. So whoever wins winners bracket um, finals is now the number one overall seed. I would imagine that's how it goes. So they argued with the uh, the person running the tournament and said, "No, we're number one seed. We had the higher free for all." Blah blah blah. The person gives in to them. The scumbags are arguing for it, and mm-hmm. I'm you know cocky like before. I was like, "I don't give a shit. You know, you can have a host. That doesn't matter to me." Uh-huh. And then you know, got to win anyway. And we won game one, and then we lost next all the rest of the, i don't know about all the rest of the games but i played terrible uh, i played i played good game one and then i just shit the bed the rest of the time so we took second um you know i i just i try not to make excuses i i talk shit about when people do make excuses i just played terrible you know same way last year in beachland i didn't play good and i didn't play good at maryland manis and but i beat that kid commando at kansas when he was teaming with legend so nice. i got my revenge <laughs> um, yeah, that's what happened though. I, and I did good in, I think we four before we took like third or fourth. Um, and yeah, I took second and there was a lot of good players. I was played really good up until the finals. And then, you know, there's how it goes. You play your worst at the biggest moment and then take yeah. second. Yeah. So, yeah. so then I there's your rundown. I can't then. believe that's a request that, uh, a, yeah. A big, from people. I don't know. That's... It didn't even have a name on it. John's just like, this is highly requested from chat, so I must read. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess they want to hear about when I shit the bed. So that was yeah. it. I, yeah. Yeah. I think I got, I think I had like 11 kills one game, and oh. I don't know. I just didn't play very good. Well, it's all going to change come uh, Atlantic City, right? So yeah. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't even matter. It's old news now. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yep. Hopefully, we have a repeat of the last one. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, all the questions for Q&A. Guys, thank you so much once again for answer, or asking all of your questions. Of course, guys, we do this every single week. So come back next week. You can ask your questions there as well. And I always love this part because it, it just brings in your knowledge. Everybody watching knows way more about this uh, and we know more about you as well. Uh, yeah. So it just kind of helps me out there. Um, but that covers everything for the show. Uh, thank you so much, man, for joining me. It was really nice getting to know you. Do you have any shout outs or anything you'd like to say uh, just to close out? Um. No, nah, nah, I don't have any shout outs, really. You know, shout out to Sean for not showing up. You know, my teammate. Um, <laughs> hello to yeah. my daughter. My daughter may watch this. I, I highly nice. doubt she'll make it. To, I'll probably just have to skip to the very end. So uh-huh. um, hello, Indy. Uh, uh, you know, all, all the guys that still play, all the people that come out, all the people that watch, all the people that support. Like, uh, you know, all, all the normal stuff, man. Just keep watching, keep playing. It's the only way we're going to keep the game alive. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I I can't wait to see what happens with MCCPC. I hope they bring it back to closer to its original form. You get more people playing it. I I think AC is a great opportunity. You got a prize pool. You hopefully we get ogres come into this, mm-hmm. and we have yeah. a, a bit of a, a storied fight there, and something exciting to to tune in for. But uh, but yeah, I mean overall a, a lot of exciting things to look forward to for Halo. So nice uh, meeting you once again, man, and thank you for joining me today. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me, man. No problem. All right, that closes out our interview. Another trip down uh, memory lane with Halo CE, learning about all these different Halo games. And it's so sick because every single Halo game is is so incredibly competitive and nuanced for their own very different reasons. So I can't wait to see what happens with Halo Infinite. I feel like they're just there's going to be a whole bunch of new with that game. And I'm excited to explore what exactly that is and hopefully make some videos about it in the future. Anyway, guys, that does close our show for today. We do have our HCS Grassroots giveaway. If you type exclamation mark Grassroots in the chat, you enter yourself in the giveaway. However, the contest is probably over now. I'm going to check to see if we have a winner uh, looking in the HCS Weekly chat here, guys. So whenever you have it, you can just let me know, and I'll let you guys uh, know who that winner is. Of course, whoever wins, it's just for this week. Next week, we'll have it again. So you can come back again next week, get your opportunity to get your grassroots skin and nameplates. There you go. It's Tau 9 
who has won the goodies. Congratulations, Tau underscore nine. You will have the uh, the skin and grassroots plate sent to you through some form of DM, I believe. I'm not. I'm actually not even sure how they get over to you. It'll get over to you, and uh, and that'll close our show for today. Of course, we also have our merch. We can throw up the merch. We have uh, T-shirts, we got sweaters, we got all this great stuff that you guys can check out. Anything that you purchase here not only supports the show, it supports me as well. And as usual, I would highly appreciate that. If you guys like this show and you enjoy listening to this show, you're watching it live currently on Twitch.tv, but this VOD will be available on YouTube.com in about a day from today, either later tonight or tomorrow morning. You can watch the full th- the full thing in video format on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify. You can listen to it on iTunes. You listen to it on Google Play. There's so many places where you can engage with this and have a good time. You could be working out and listening to HCS Weekly at the same time. So hopefully you guys engage with some of that stuff and hopefully you enjoy the show. And uh, that'll be it for me today, guys. I'll see you around next time.